Hello, folks. Hey. There's Michael. Guten Tag. Yep. We're waiting on more. Yep. Oh, did I? I hope I silenced that. Mm. I think mm. I did. Which reminds me, I need to go back over here. So I know this is going to pop up right about any second here. Maybe. Of course, there are a bunch of other lives going on this evening, so we might not give very many people. Yeah. Oh, their oh. their loss. We had three. Now we're down to one. There's Mama Z. Oh, good grief! Now the kids found a whistle. Apologies in advance, folks, for external noises outside my door. There are a bunch of kids out there playing. All right. <clears throat> there we go. Hey, fish and loaves. So get your computer questions ready. We are expecting another guest, Reed at MOI, but uh, he has not made it as of yet. Rebecca, old man. Hey guys. <clears throat> Don't mind Gil. He's teasing everybody by eating nice, fresh, hot pot pie. Yeah. Sorry, I was I had, I had a dream moment there of eating fresh hot pot pie, but you know. And it came out so perfect too. Yeah, it had a nice little dome on the top. It wasn't oozing out the sides. I spent too much time out on the track. I didn't have time to uh, get a proper dinner fixed up. <clears throat> I'm lucky I remember to come in. It's like, oh, crud. Look at the sky. Oh, I bet it's 7 o'clock already. It was 6.35. That's yeah, okay. I'm used to starting off solo. Uh, so, like I said, get y'all's computer questions ready. If you have any now, go ahead and throw them up there. We'll uh, address them here quickly. And as soon as we get a few more in here, we'll get started. Mm. Uh, his was store-bought, pre-packaged. Yeah. All right. Best pot pie, in my opinion, is made out of a uh, bowl of bread with pot pie on the, the pot pie crust on the top. Your mic sounded fine as far as I could tell, Mama Z. Sometimes you just got to go in and get things set up in advance and then work on it. I used to go in and do, um, yeah, banquet. Banquet, yeah. I used to go in and um, like two or three hours before I would go live on OBS, I used Streamlabs OBS. I'd go in and make sure everything was set correctly. And then I'd go, la di da, do something else. And then when it was time, I'd have mine set up. Because I don't trust leaving settings overnight. Things have a tendency to change. <laughs> I like people's attitudes in this world. One minute, they're great. The next minute, they stab you in the back. The next minute, it's like, ah, oh, come here. Oh, my little friend. Mm-hmm. You know, I have never gone live on anything other than StreamYard. You're fortunate. You've not yeah. had to smash your face against your computer trying to get OBS to work correctly. Oh, I did. I tried doing it. Couldn't do it. I said, screw it. I'm going to use, uh, yeah, yeah. I, did, I said, I'll just use uh, um, StreamYard. Uh, I noticed a couple other channels doing that, too. Yeah, there's a way to integrate StreamYard and 
S L O B S Streamlabs, yeah. to where you can do a lot more and make it look really pretty. But I'll admit I'm just a little lazy. Yeah. I'm just a country boy at heart. I'm lucky I'm able to understand computers as well as I do. Well, let's see. I don't have any latte because I don't do lattes. I am fresh out of whipped cream. And as far as the dog, just throw a quarter inch steak out there. He'll shut up. He'll be your best friend forever. So when you tell him to shit it, he'll shut up. He may want another piece of steak, but yeah, and don't spoil them right away. Just just throw him a soup bone. He'll stop yeah. barking and start gnawing. Or a nice big thick rawhide chew. That usually works good too. Mm. Speaking of which, seeing as how we ain't got that many people in here yet. And yes, old man, hit any key to continue. That uh, didn't work. Anywho, um, for uh, SHTF, if you're having to scavenge and scrounge, please DR. Um, having a rawhide chew or 10 in your bag while you're scavenging might not be a bad idea. That way, if you come run across the pack of puppies who look rather hungry and are salivating for your legs, uh, throw them some rawhide chews. They might just leave you alone. I hadn't thought of that. That's a good idea. Well, you forgot part of it there, CR. It's not, it's Unix based, not Linux. Linux is based off Unix. But let's not get too old fashioned here. Most of these people probably don't even know what Unix is or Linux. Yeah. I was hoping Reed would show up by now. Yeah. But he's probably out there playing in that nice desert warm sun. Mm. Well, say I, he may have gotten stuck at work. Also a possibility. Because, hey, he, he works with. He works with com uh, computers. Mm -hmm. My cat better hope they don't open that door up too fast or she'll be missing a few paws. Anywho, well, let's go ahead and discuss Linux initially. Linux is what, well, it was based on Unix, which is what all computer systems are based on, be it Windows or Apple or Linux, was originally based on Unix code. Or some people might understand it better as DOS, or Direct do, Operating System. Do, 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 DOS, yeah. Your first version of communication was originally designed by the Department of Defense, the first chat rooms. Your first internet service was also done by Department of Defense. The size of file storage that now fits inside your phone used to take two or three rooms of floor to ceiling tape machines, reel to reel tape machines. That was memory way back then. Then they shrunk it down to floppy disks, five and a half, three and a half, then cassette tapes, then regular memory sticks. And now we have SSD or solid state drives. Didn't there used to be some floppy disks that were about the size of a LP? Government work. For government work. Yeah. I don't know. I, not too many people have ever seen those or had the opportunity to use one, so I didn't bring it up. I just remember, remember uh, uh, there were a couple movies back in the day where they were had pulling the discs off and putting, you know, big old ones and putting them in the machines. And... Mm -hmm. 
It's an old Dell laptop, 17 inch, super heavy. I got, I got two Dells sitting here, 17 inch, super heavy. But mine were, um, oh, geez, I can't remember what that, what, um, which, what, what latitude number they are. Yes, CR floppy disks of a whopping one megabyte of storage. Try, can you imagine? Hey, Allie, can you imagine right now trying to store something in one megabyte? Yeah. I remember when we had, got our first uh, home computer. Um, it was an 8088. Uh, you know, called it an AT or something like that. Uh, oh boy. <clears throat> Very first computer I ever worked on was made by Tandy Radio Shack. And it was called the TRS-80. Those in the know, mostly back in the day, affectionately called it the Trash Can 80. Because it was about as smart as the people who built it in the first place. Mm-hmm. And it had a proficiency of not doing as it was told to do. <clears throat> Approximately, CR, yes. Now, see, for those who have really old computers, um, instead of trying to run Windows or a version of Apple on it, Linux, and usually Linux is the one with the Penguin. There is also Red Hat. Um, which has obviously a red hat. Um, those are good ones to use on older systems. So you can have a way to surf the web, check emails and stuff like that, if that's all you want to do. Now, my sister, you're, back when we, had, when we upgraded from our first, uh, I, guess, I think it was an AT to an XT, or maybe it was an XT to an AT can't remember but um she got a <clears throat> a computer from costco called gold star and do you know what it's do you know what it's um hard drive was it wasn't a hard drive it was flop uh, five and a half inch floppies and you had your other floppies for other stuff yep you plugged in a floppy to start it up when it was running, you pulled out that floppy, you grabbed your program floppy, you stuck that in, it loaded the program, you pulled that one out, then you grabbed your five and a half or five and a quarter inch floppy for storage media to save what you were working on. Then you saved it, pulled that one back out, then you stuck in your next program, and then your next program back and forth. Back hey, forth. Will. Hey, Will. And wide family is in the house. <coughs> All right. Well, sorry, Mr. Live. I was out on the tractor when it was going on. Didn't even know. You know, I missed a lot of things today trying to get stuff done. Yeah, I got no notifications at all on it. If it hadn't been for Lori coming over to Discord and telling me, I wouldn't have known it was even on because I got nothing out of it. I actually had to go search his channel out to find it. There's Miss Kathy. Hey. Now the um, the next computer that we got, I'm trying to remember what it was. It came after that. And it's ancient history. And considering 30 years ago was ancient history as far as computers are concerned. Oh, if you buy a phone today, tomorrow it's already out of date. Yeah. But I know the, um, when we got the, uh, our next computer, a friend of mine gave me a program called MechWire. And we plugged it in and it wouldn't work because um, it, the clocking speeds were different between the, um, whatever the, um, 684 or whatever he had. When you, usually when you run into a clocking speed, it's between one of three things. Either the motherboard itself, 
between the BIOS and the CPU or between the CPU and the RAM. It's usually, one of, it's usually the conflict in one, inside those three that cause uh, speed issues. Well, it's because it worked on the old, re, the really older, pro, older computers. But when we put it in on a newer computer, what would happen is instead of the, the stuff, you know, walking on, uh, you know, the, the mechs walking along, it was like, it's like, you know, so, so fast you couldn't play the game. You just need to up your game. Awesome, Will. Glad to hear it. Now take it easy this time. Do not worry about your channel. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. And we've uh, been telling people to watch it. Go back and watch old videos so your watch time should be should be start coming up again. And let's see, somebody else came in. I missed it. Kristen Sharon. Hello. Hey, hey, hey Kristen Sharon. Make me a cup while you're at it, fishing lows. This one's getting kind of empty. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. I stopped in before I started mine up. Said hello to Howie. He still got his 24 hour stream going. A 24 hour live stream. Yep. What program is he using to keep it going for 24 hours? The stream. Because I know, like with StreamYard, it says you got uh, it'll do. You can do four hours and you uh, stop and restart. Mm, yeah. Mine went over four hours the other night and didn't stop and start. Mm, maybe they up. Maybe they upgraded it stuff, or maybe that was on the free version. I think that was just the free version. Yeah. <clears throat> Ouch. I'm glad it wasn't my head that butted. I'd have the headache. <clears throat> I actually started on computers in 1977. I have forgotten more about programming in DOS than these kids coming out of college today learning how to program in C++ and the various 200,000 other forms of programming. 486. Yeah, I know what a 486 is. Okay. My today's standard is slow. Yeah. Thank you, Cecilia. And everybody re <coughs> remembers when uh, Windows 98 was replaced. Oh, I remember playing with Windows 3.5. Yeah, but everything, everything up to you know ninety eight was still play work with stuff from before. After ninety eight, then the you know the, the NT and stuff would not work with programs written for you know Windows ninety eight, Windows ninety five, or any of that stuff. For the first year, you're correct, but the outcry from the community was so loud that Microsoft had no choice but to make it backwards compatible. Because I was running both a 98 and an NT server in my house when I was running a game, Dark Age of Camelot, and I had no issues once they uh, made it backward compatible. Hmm. And two family, we're, right now we're just, just, yeah, just discussing uh, early forms of computing and stuff like that. We're not actually going to build one tonight, but we are going to discuss aspects of it. So those who wish to build one, should they have the need to... Uh, be able to build it for what they need rather than going out willy-nilly, going to Walmart, buying a $480 computer and finding out that their phone is 10 times faster than the computer they just dealt out half as much for. Yeah. So, I mean, the premise is to give the basic understanding so they can build a computer for what they need. Mama Z, I have a Windows. I have a Macintosh. I have an Android tablet. Um, I could put together a Unix system, but I'm not going to. I'm trying to keep up with chat here. Yeah. Hey, two family. <clears throat> 
guess they came in. Yes. Everyone's, yep, everyone's saying hi to them. So, hi. <laughs> um, I just finished my dinner. So, that's what I was doing. I was out riding the tractor too much and working outside too much. Now, a point of contention amongst PC builders is the difference between 98, ME, Vista, and all that. Of all of them, 98 became the most stable. Vista and ME both had massive issues right up till the time they got rid of it, till they stopped servicing them. Yeah. No problem, Kathy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> yeah, for, we for all you other people who don't know who Two Family Homestead is, um, if you want technical help on a more individualized basis, um, send, go over to their channel, go to their email or their about page, find their email, and uh, he can give you some great tips on not only building a PC if you run into issues, which I can as well, um, but he can also help you grow your channel by giving you tips and tricks to make your channel look really pretty and help beat the algorithm. I've done giving up on the algorithm. I don't care about it no more. So that's why my channel is still the way it is. The algorithm can go fly a kite in a snowstorm. And if my suddenly channel suddenly dies, you'll know what happened. Hey, Jerry. <clears throat> yep, I've been following Two Family Homestead for quite a while. Back when I had my first channel, Wolf's Den, no BS reviews. Don't mind me, I'm watching my kids, or my kid and the neighbor kid. Yeah. Hey, Scott. <coughs> Scott! So, anybody have any basic computer questions that have been bugging them for their life and have had never had an answer for? Or, just plain questions. Why did... No, we're not asking why the chicken crossed the dang road. No, no, no. Why did Xerox give away the Windows platform to Bill Gates? Uh, let's not get into that crap, please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, if, they re if they'd realized what they had at the time, it would not be... Uh, It'd be Xerox, not Microsoft. And yeah, Xerox exactly. Would maintain its position in the world. So I have yet to see a single question. Maybe this was just a bad topic. All righty. Okay, we'll try to look for it on Saturday. Who's buying my gaming computer? Why buy one pre-built? Why spend four thousand dollars when I can build you a decent gaming computer for less than six hundred? Yeah. And it, that's where I want to go with some of this tonight is because you see all these ads, and mind you, some of these pre-built systems are phenomenal. I mean, you can take games that are very graphic intensive, like World of Warcraft, and set it on full settings and still get 120 frames per second uh that that's insane but 99.9 .9 of us yes xerox is still around they're just really tiny now yeah um 90 of us really don't need something that intensive for around 550 to 600 bucks you can build a decent system that's got a four gig uh, video card eight gigs of computer ram a 250 gigabyte solid state drive, which will need more RAM or more uh, hard drive space. Well, an all in one computer is fine if all you're doing is basic stuff like surfing the web, answering emails, minor uh, computing stuff. As a rule, all in ones usually don't have a whole lot of RAM. Will, you ain't that old. 
it just takes getting the right pieces together and watching a video or two on the proper way to do it. One thing I will suggest, if you're not used to building computers and understanding what an electrostatic shock is, get an ESD wrap, wrist wrap. What that does is it attaches to your wrist and it's got a wire, a coil wire that grounds to the frame of the computer chassis that you're working on. So you can build up no static electricity between the two. So you don't fry components when you're putting it together. <laughs> Both of us who've been building it for years know how to de-static de us. Well, most motherboards nowadays have decent quality sound cards. I mean, it, it's depending on what you're doing. If you're just doing voice calls once in a while, then the standard onboard sound will do you just fine. But when you start stepping out into video live streaming, and especially with programs like OBS, Slobs, which is Streamlabs OBS, um, Zoom, don't recommend it, or StreamYard, um, you want something with a little bit more graphics ability. You don't want your graphics taxing on your CPU. So you want a separate graphics card with at least four gigs of RAM. Having us out, you know, for me, and Daryl's got the same thing, they've got a sound board plugged into their computer. So all their sound processing is done on that and then sent to the computer. So the computer isn't really doing any of the sound processing. It's just receiving a signal and it ships it out. Well, we're going to give you a raise, Will. We'll give you a raise. We'll get you up into our pay grades. I'm just here for comic relief. <clears throat> the last, the only PC I built was back. What was running uh, Windows 98? And they bring up a perfectly good top point: Micro Center, which is the builder's friend when it comes to PC parts. As a rule, not always. But as a rule, they will meet or beat any advertised price on anything they have in stock. You just have to take a picture of the advertised price from another competitor. It may take a little bit of finagling, but usually you can get their prices beat. So Micro Center will be the lower price. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I was getting there, CR. Just give me a minute. I'm a little slow. <clears throat> But in modern technology, you want, oh shoot, let me go see if I can find it. We'll find you for now, go while I go try and find some bits and bobs. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. <coughs> so, how's everybody doing out there? Yeah, the, uh, I mean, my computer stuff is basically the exact same ones we had at DHS that they got rid of, but I picked, uh, Picks them up for a uh, uh, for a song, and then a friend of mine, his company had the exact same computer, and they were getting rid of it. And and their new computers, they had the wrong, they ordered the wrong uh, solid state drive, Holy and and okay. eighty, and so that basically he gave me one of those old computers with the the brand new wrong size solid state drive. So that's what I'm op operating on right now. <clears throat> ah, there we go. Sorry. Okay. Oh, let me go. Let me go super sized here. Y'all go full the screen so you can see this. All right. Who walked in here? Hey, brass. All right. This is micro center and this is their clearance computer parts. Close out. This is a good place to shop. This is for my local store, but parts can usually be shipped. Excuse me. But this is a cooling kit for water. You don't want that. Here is a hard drive, 100 bucks. And it says 960 gig. It's basically a terabyte in size, but the way they label things, it shows 960 gig. But that gives you your uh, hard drive space. There's another solid state drive for 79, but it's half the size. 
uh, another water cooling kit. When you're first building a computer, I wouldn't worry about going bells and whistles fancy with water cooling. It's not necessary. That's usually only for high end systems. And you definitely don't want no leaks. Uh, here's different types of RAM, but I would recommend no less than eight gigs of RAM unless you can swing it and go to 16 gig. The more RAM you have, the easier your processor on your computer is going to run. Excuse me. But as you can see, there are lots of different varieties. Here's your PC cooler. There is a really, really cheap video card. I would bypass that. Um, if you're doing video streaming, if you're processing and editing videos for on YouTube, darn it, I just got hit by the sleep bug. You definitely want to spend a little bit on your video card. Right here is a nice one right now. It's, they even have an open box one. Um, but uh, Radeon RX 570, it's overclocked. It's got two fans on it that'll help keep it cool. And it's four gig. Perfect for doing uh, video editing and streaming as long as you've got a strong enough processor and enough RAM. Make sure I haven't missed anybody. Mm -hmm. Old 888. Uh, just a minute. Hey, Pennsylvania Prepper. <laughs> I think that was a rather unique way of saying hello, Pennsylvania Prepper. <laughs> Hell, oh, hello. I think Dave is dealing with some uh, rambunctious youngsters in the back room. <clears throat> CR, get as geeky as you want. All right. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, this is uh, one field where I am out of my league and when it comes to uh, building computers. I'm just like I said, I'm just up here for the comic relief and maybe to be uh, to ask the quote dumb questions, but um. Yeah, so I have a feeling that, you know, the boys were getting a little too rowdy back there and something happened. Who's got their garden? And um, I'm working on my garden. In fact, I have some videos. I got, I got about six hours worth of videos I have to uh, condense down from uh, working on the watering system for the uh, property here. Hey, Pennsylvania. Didn't see you come in. Sorry. Cat wants to say hello, so let's give her her moment of fame. There you go, Titan. Say hello. Okay, you done? Can I get back to work now? Okay. Yeah, now back to this. Let's see, where was I at? Mm, talk about the uh, that uh, video yeah, card I'm there. To, trying to catch up on Pennsylvania Prepper's comment there. Mm. They had to stop in the middle of it. Yeah. But while we wait for that, I'll go back over this. Oh, darn it. But you definitely wanted to get a fast, hyper-threading processor. We haven't gotten to any of those yet. And as soon as I find one, I'll show you. No, you don't want that. All right, let's see. Next page. You 
Yeah, it's replacing your CPU fan, uh, depending on whether it's on a laptop or a desktop is pretty easy. It's easy for me on both, but for the average person, it's sometimes it, laptops are not fun to work on because of all the ribbon cables and all the connections that have to be just perfect. So if it's on the desktop, it's usually pretty simple. You unplug the Molex connector from the motherboard, you take out two to four screws, you replace it with a new fan, plug it in, you're good to go. If it's on a laptop, that takes a lot more work. Let's see, here's that more RAM. Let's see. Two times 16. Now, see, that, that's actually a pretty decent price for RAM. But when you buy RAM, you have to make sure it fits your motherboard. Yeah. So, and you've also got to have a decent tower. This is an ATX mid tower, which means it's pretty good sized. Well, if you watch the YouTube video and he gets the right fan, it is pretty easy. He just has to make sure everything's plugged back in perfectly. Or A, it won't work. Or at worst case, B, it'll short out. You also have to worry about power supplies. And I don't see any of those clickable. Oh, not clickable. But, uh, well, let's just go to motherboards. So... And, gee, they don't want much, do they? <laughs> okay, let's do it this way. Bing, lowest price. Let's not look at the ones that make everybody cry. On the average, around $100 is a good price for a motherboard. And... I'm personally not familiar with ASRock. I have dealt with MSI and Gigabyte before. Um, and they're both the same price. If it was up to me, I would go with the Gigabyte. It's an ATX motherboard, which will fit in a uh, standard ATX case. And that gives you plenty of room for a larger power supply because if you're doing editing, uh, your video card is going to be needing extra power on its own. So you need a power supply that runs at least 600 watt. And I wish I could put muzzles on the kids. I mean, um, anyhow, um, but you want at least a 600 watt or higher power supply. Um, but let's say we go with that one. Now we need to worry about processors. Let's see if it lists any with it. Sometimes they'll give you a suggestion Well, we don't want that. No, we don't want 10. We don't want spies. Uh, it doesn't show a processor to go with it. Hmm. So, anyway, other than bore you guys for the next two years while I try to find it. <coughs> Micro Center would be the best place, and most of their staff is usually pretty intelligent. So let's say you've got $600 to build a computer. And I showed Gil a link, and if he can pull it up off his email, maybe he can share it in the chat somewhere. Of a guy that built using 2019, around 100 bucks is a good price for motherboard. Yes, it will. Um, you could obviously go extremely higher. But <laughs> he built using 2019. No, by the time it starts showing that fault, the bearings are shot and it's not rotating flat like it needs to be. It, the processor, as you've noticed, a severe shaking to it and it will keep giving you that error. I had to replace that in my P this uh, HP laptop I've got. It took me 30 minutes to do it, but that's because I have previous knowledge on working on laptops. An 8088 computer. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I've been looking back at some old stuff here. Yeah, that's old. Okay. Um, there's the link, and there's the video. 
and that he those are all <laughs> decent parts and pop bot, bibs bots boobs whatever oops i said the b word sorry but he's got an overkill power supply pennsylvania prepper i if you don't have access to the proper size screwdrivers and type of screwdrivers for yours um i would go out and go to the manufacturer's website find out what processor you have what fan it has i would buy the fan off of ebay or craigslist if you can find it or not craigslist amazon but go ahead and buy it off ebay or amazon get it shipped to your house then take the fan in there and most shops around here charge about a hundred dollars an hour i think that's way too high i used to only charge twenty dollars an hour for software thirty dollars an hour for hardware installations when I did it, but that was also like 18 years ago. But if you see right there, and if you go check out that video link that Gil put up, he goes over it and the parts that are there, you got a motherboard, a video card, you got processor, you got an extra fan, a decent ATX mini case and a power supply, everything you need. And that will run most games with no issues. That'll do all your video processing, your video streaming. That'll take care of everything you need as far as a YouTuber goes. But as far as the price goes, I would say if they want to charge $60 or more, I would tell them, okay, I'll go find a new shop. If you were closer to me, I'd just say, bring me the parts and I'll put it in for nothing. But we're not that close. No, the only way that would happen if uh, one of the wires were to come off it is if they were already separating in the first place. Hey, Bama fan. Right, if you can get one to change it for 40 bucks, then it's fair, but I would definitely buy the fan in advance. Um, that's just my personal thing. That way they can't say, uh, if you send me the money, I can build you one, but I, I can't, I can't even build myself one right now because if I'm going to build one, it would be pretty much the one that we just seen in that video. Those are everything I would need to do what I need to do here. And it would free up this laptop to rest instead of running constantly the burner and everything else. Some places will build a PC to just less than a gaming computer for around 600 bucks. But that's them wanting to put an operating system on it for you. Then they'll want to bundle a monitor with it. So another place you can check is your Craigslist ads or Facebook marketplace if you're so inclined and just watch there. Sometimes somebody have a decent computer and they'll let it go for nothing because they upgraded something newer. Uh, I wouldn't. I would. Because um, what's going to happen is the P CPU, your processor is going get, to get hotter and hotter. The thermal paste will quit working completely. It'll actually turn into a crust and you'll start burning up components and you'll warp the motherboard and then it's completely all poop you will have to replace the whole thing so if you have a fan issue park it turn it off unplug the battery from it um, don't worry about the internal clock that's easy enough to reset until you can get a fan replaced Well, if you send the money, well, I will build it and ship it out to you. It's not that hard. At least, well, I should say, let me rephrase it. I've been playing with computers since 77. It's not that hard for me. Similar note as to when Doc says he can go in and do this surgery. It's easy for him. And I'm going, say what? I, I understand what he's saying. 
because I've been reading about that stuff for a long time, but I'm not saying I can do it. Yeah, a big TV or work for monitor. As long as it's got an eight, your, and that's another thing to think about is your video card having HDMI output. Because then you can run it straight to your TV and don't need an extra monitor. Unless you're like me or Gil, like having two or three different monitors to sit there and bounce your head around looking at all the time. Because it makes you feel impotent. Got one there, got one there, got one there. Yeah, if I had all mine on, it'd be all night long. What do you mean bridge? As far as processing power? Not really. Not, not reliable enough to want to do it. Now, if you really want to get extravagant, what you can do is buy a dual CPU motherboard. It has places for two CPUs. And if you get two quad core or two octa core CPUs, you're pushing government level processing in the higher restricted processing. That is not the average person's desktop. But in order to bridge, you actually need a server set up. The largest computers in the world are actually multiple server boards interconnected. The ones that do multiple teraflops a second, that's multiple um, boards interlinked and they're all server boards. And a server board is different from a standard PC board in the fact that your server board doesn't have onboard graphics. It doesn't usually have onboard sound. No, you're better off just getting a better computer than having dual monitors, personally. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's the, that's why you want to get a quad or an octa-core. But uh, when you start talking octa-core, which is eight cores and a CPU, you start talking some serious money and they ain't cheap. Yeah, you need RAM. A decent processor will get you by if you've got enough RAM. And in order to run OBS, and I wouldn't run Zoom if it was the last program on planet Earth, I'd just quit doing it. Um, but you need RAM. 16 gigs of RAM will free up your processor to run the way it's meant to. And if you have a four gig video card, 16 gigs of PC, CPU RAM, as well as a four core processor, you run everything with virtually no lag, as long as your internet can keep up with it. But that's something else you got to think about too, is this, you might have a really good computer, but you could be stuck like poor Gil is with the world's crappiest internet service. And so it doesn't matter what computer he's got, he's still going to fade in and out like uh, neon disco lights. Uh, yeah. When, it, when it's, when it's working, it works good, but it's such a problem hooking up that all of a sudden it's just, you know, you've seen me just disappear off my live stream or his live stream is, gone for two three minutes then it comes back on again i would honestly like to go back bama to windows 98 i still have two copies of windows 98 upstairs i got one well i, I just, let me rephrase that i have two hard copies i have like 280 different codes <laughs> to activate it with but unfortunately, nothing nowadays is compatible with Windows 98, so it'd be pointless. Well, I got a stack of old games for it, MechWarrior games and some others. But the, my PC here is running Windows 8 Pro. I will not upgrade to 10 because 10 has so much spyware from Microsoft built into it that if you pee, it knows what color it was without you saying a word. I don't like that kind of intrusion in my life, personally.
That's not a bad laptop. I would definitely check into upgrading your RAM. If it's brand new from the factory with four gig, you should be able to go up to eight gig with no problem. That's what I did with my HP here. It came with four grab, four gig, and I threw that in here, shot it with a slingshot and ordered eight gig. It took 12 attempts to hit it, but I finally hit it. So got a question just popped in my mind here. Okay. When you're talking about you know Windows and stuff. What else is there out there to use besides Apple and Windows? Linux. And um, Chrome works good on Linux. The browser? Yes. Yeah. But there is a learning curve for Linux. Yeah. Because if you're not familiar with writing code, which you shouldn't have to, but if you're not familiar with writing code, it makes it a little more difficult to understand the way things are written and used inside Linux. Having a basic understanding of code really helps. I've got a Macintosh right here too. It's an old one, it's 2009. Works just fine. I may upgrade the RAM in it someday, but I doubt it. All I use it for is monitoring Discord and is, you know, also as running a um, uh, ban hammer over here if I have to. Windows 95 was okay. But see, I started off programming where it was line 10, blah, blah, blah. Line 20, blah, blah, blah. Line 30, blah, 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 go to line 10. Line 40, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, it depends on what you want to do there, Pennsylvania Prepper. Uh, do you want to do video editing and sound editing? Then, yes, Mac is 110% better than anything Windows ever thought about doing. Macintosh is more stable with less RAM and less processing power than a Windows. Now, see, for the Mac I've got, I've got it also to run the sound for if I decide to try and put music together. So all my sound is in the sound processing um, workstations are on the Macintosh. I compose everything over there. Then I bring it over to my Windows computer to finalize, edit, and make it for videos. Oh, let's not get started on that, Bama. Please. Well, there's more programs available for Windows. Yeah. Sadly. All the high end, you know, all the high end games are designed for Windows. Say why again. Which part? Because you both said, say what? So reiterate what I said that confused thy. Well, as far as basic programs, Windows has a lot more of them than Macintosh does. But on the upside, Macintosh being the smart little apples that they are, proprietary little punks. I mean, um, <laughs> oh, yes, you can tell I just love Apple. Um, they do have what is called a Windows clone in it. So you can run most Windows programs on an Apple. Not as effectively, not as smoothly. But if you want to do video editing or sound editing, photo editing, Apple is the best platform. Oh, when I do music, when I try making music for my videos, I'll because all the editing software, because Apple does it so much smoother with less power, I can put everything together. I can compose everything on the Apple. Then I'll put it to a hard drive or a thumb drive. 
bring it over here to my Windows computer. <laughs> and then I can finalize editing over here for putting it out on my videos through uh, Filmora. <laughs> all right, Rebecca. It's okay. We all have blonde roots. We just don't tell people most of the time. <laughs> the power button. <laughs> Uh, not Rebecca. <laughs> and that's a misnomer. Because I don't want to put Filmora on the Mac. And I can do things with Filmora that I can't do on the audio processing software. Yeah, it does work on the Mac. It does. But I don't want to put another, I don't want to pay for another copy to put it on my Macintosh as well as having a copy on my PC. Because for my video editing that I do, I just put it on my PC because it's bigger. It has a bigger screen. I can see it. My 17 inch is half again as big as the 13 inch as far as my being able to see things. And for me, that's a plus. Now, if I build me a desktop, I will be resituating my 55 inch TV to be sitting right here, or right here up above where everything is now. And that's what I'll hook my desktop up to, to do all my editing. And I probably run all my live streams through it as well. Of course, I'd have to go like this all the time to read everything, but you know. Oh, yeah. And back to the whole worms thing. Um, Apple has less issues with viruses than Windows. They still have issues, don't get me wrong. But as a rule, there is less because Apple does a better job initially of securing their stuff than Windows does. Which is why every iteration of Windows that's come out over the last 45 years, the minute they release it within 24 hours, they're putting security patches in it. It's like, Oops, we forgot to cover that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. 250,000 updates later, there's still patching problems. Well, Apple says, here's this. Two months later, oh, we're sorry we missed this one. And eight months later, it's like, no, we're still good, thanks. So, I mean, as far as that goes, Apple is much better. I have no idea. They're hiding. Well, now they're running back and forth between mine and the neighbor's yard. But uh, they're trying to stay out of the cameras. And it's not back there. It's right outside the door, unfortunately. I would get a new fan. New fan will run you 20 bucks plus getting it installed if you don't want to do it yourself. So less than 80 bucks. You can have it running again. No problem. See, I can run everything on my laptop right here, but that's because I upgraded to 8 gigs of RAM. Now, I still cannot play World of Warcraft very efficiently on this because the processing power is lower and it has onboard video graphics, not separate. So if I wanted to be able to play World of Warcraft at much better resolution, I would have to build a desktop or spend $4,000 for a custom built laptop. I'm not doing it. For that kind of money, I can go buy a car and build a desktop that's 10 times better. But see, I paid 800 for this laptop when I bought it a couple of years ago. It's touchscreen, it's decent. At the time, it was the flagship model for HP, which it's not anymore. It's, I mean, this has got Beats audio in it, so its audio sounds really good. But when the fan started going out, I replaced the fan and bought an upgraded RAM kit. And it still works. Obviously. I mean, we just do our thing. And to finish answering the question, what are they doing? It's two boys, one girl. No, they're not doing anything they're not supposed to be doing, but we know how kids can be. They start getting really loud.
With this one, I haven't had to worry about it because it's not that big of a processor. Well, I don't know of any games that you play there, Will. So you'd have to tell me what you play. I mean, if you're all you do is playing solitaire or something like that, then you really don't need nothing that big. <laughs> Guilty. Yeah, you can get away with a really ancient computer to play solitaire. No, Windows 10 does not come with any of the games on it anymore. Nope. You have to go download a live version on the internet. If you lose your internet, you can't start a new game. You got to wait till your internet comes back. Do you know why they got rid of it? Too many Fortune 500 companies were complaining that their employees were playing solitaire instead of doing their work. So Bill said, oh, I'll take care of that for you. We'll just pull it right out of the program. And now they have it where they can get it online. Ladies and, and gentlemen. Pop-up commercials. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stream. MOI. Hey, everyone. It's Reed. Uh, I'm a dumbass. I apparently can't get time zones done correctly some days. So <laughs> you guys can all laugh at me. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, here, this is an expert uh, right there. He does it for a living. So, so what are we at? Where are we, uh, what have we covered? Well, we, Where are we we've been doing? discussing building a basic system for being able to do YouTube and stuff like that. And I'll bring this back up real quick so you can see kind of what I showed them. This is a video a guy did latter part of last year. And he's using, oh, okay. I've never heard of these brands, but after watching the, uh, the build video, it seems to be pretty pretty decent, but that's for five fifty. A lot of the stuff that you can build, uh, buy, and build yourself is pretty decent because um, if you think about it, like they're trying to market to aftermarket people that are doing this. And if you get a bad rep in the market of aftermarket stuff, I mean, it it goes around the internet like lickety split, and it costs more money to put it together yourself in a lot of cases. So uh, usually when you put it together yourself, you get pretty good. The ones you got to watch out for, especially, are those, um, what's the word, like the cheapos you see at Walmart, the all-together, put-together machines. Oh, they're horrible. I, I can't tell you how many times, like, we would have people buy them, bring them into the office and say, can we set this up on the network? No! Get that trash out of here. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. There are good computers at the box stores. There are good computers at Dell. There's good computers from HP and all that. But usually if you want one of those good computers, you need to buy um, the business class. I always say buy the business class. And they're going to cost a bit of money. They always do. Um, but a great example is like when I buy business class laptops for my own personal use. And I will save up the money and I'll spend like $2,000. I know, shock, $2,000. Oh, my gosh. But I'll get to use the darn thing for 10 years. The last one I had, I spent about $2,300 on. I used it for 10 years. And that's a good investment. It breaks down. It, it comes out to be a cheaper over the long haul. And, you know, that's pretty true in life, isn't it? You know, you save the money. You buy the better brand. And uh, you end up with a much better stuff. Now, so some good, some real good rules, things that really help us out. When you're looking for computers, there's a couple things that really, really, really help you. More RAM. More RAM in a computer is so, so much helpful. Uh, I prefer Linux, actually. Um, and after Linux, I go with Windows. Um, I actually detest, I, I mean, utterly and horrifically detest Apple. And it's a long rant. But it more, more, the reason why I don't like Apple revolves around how much of a horrible person Steve Jobs is. That, that guy was one of the worst. But... I also don't like Apple for a bunch of other reasons, like the idea that they would solder on memory onto the motherboard of the laptop, solder on the SSD drive, solder on the processor. So the way you bought that machine, you can never change it. All right. Something, yeah. Something fails in that thing. Um, it's a lot harder to fix. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube that is an awesome channel to go watch. 
His name is Lewis Rossman, and that is his, his channel uh, name. It's L O U I S, or how you spell Lewis, and then it's R O S S M A N or N N, one of two. But you'll find him. But he does uh, computer repair, and he shows like the circuit board level repairs he does. He shows how to desolder stuff and all that. But he primarily focuses on Apple. And the amount of rants he get on how bad the design is, and he's having to make corrections and fix them. They're juicy. I love the entertainment value of this stuff. It, it's so much fun. Um, but if you want to learn why Apple's not really a good choice, and it's all marketing, um, smoke and mirrors, Lewis Rossman, he will he will educate you something fierce. <laughs> and if you if you guys haven't noticed between what I've already said and what he just said, um, kind of mirrors themselves. We both pretty much said the same thing. Linux. Yep. Linux. And I, yeah. I, I almost went on a rant about Apple. Now, if you want processing power for videos, Apple is better because it can do more with less than Windows does. Uh, it depends on that. Most of the stuff now is on the GPUs. And like if you get your stuff configured correctly, like on mine, uh, my things, I use the GPU to do the encoding. And so it's all GPU driven. So it goes really quick. Um, Which is why stuff. I tell them to get at least a decent video card with no less than four gigs of RAM for their video card. Well, I usually all well. The problem also for some of these is you have to buy um, what uh, like Nvidia cards are called the Quattros. They're the professional series, and uh, AMD's is called the Radeon Pro. Um, unfortunately, the cards are not cheap. Um, I think the one I put in my computer was like nine hundred dollars. So, not the cheapest thing in the world, I know, guys. <laughs> but um, there are options in the business class models. You have a laptop edition of one of those, so you can get it still on a laptop that costs like um, $2,500, and it can do the video encoding and all this other stuff really well. Um, but, I mean, What's the channel again? Uh, Lewis Rossman. Lewis Rossman. Yeah. I bet Gil's going to dig it up real quick and post it. Uh, I'm working on it. Yeah, so aside from RAM, I always say get as much RAM in a computer as you possibly can. But if you can't afford all the RAM, get a computer that can have a much larger max RAM so later you could add to it and stuff. And that greatly extends the life of the computer. The other one is getting a good quality SSD drive. Um, they breathe life into old or old systems and make systems run so, so good. Um, it, it's just not even worth the effort of putting a hard drive in for the uh, main application and OS drive anymore. They are so, so nice. Uh, they, are, they are worth the money. Thankfully, they're not the cost they used to be. I mean, when they first came out, like a 50 gig drive was, I think, like a grand or more. It was, it was nice. Right. Is this it? You want to put it up there? I'm getting there. I'm slow. <laughs> Is that it? Mm, how many subscribers does that say? Like a million? 1.15 million. Yeah, it's probably him. Scroll down a little bit. Let's look at some of the videos and see if we can get a clip nail of him in it. Oh, yeah, that's definitely him. Yeah, that's circuit boards and everything. Yep, that's him. Yeah. Okay, he so here's the uh, – so I'll throw the link up here in a second. Uh, yeah. He also does a lot of interesting uh, rants and stuff about um, dumb government policies because he has a small business. And so he's been going on about all the issues. Like he's been highlighting all sorts of the stupid things and the relief packages and all that. Like how they gave the money and they had the banks administer it through the, the SBA was behind it, but the banks did it. So even though stuff wasn't in the, the law, the banks added strange requirements to people to keep them from getting it. And they focused real hard on making certain the people that owe them money got the money so that they didn't go out of business. So they didn't lose their investment on their loans. Um, He's he's a really interesting guy to listen to. Uh, sadly, he's in New York, so. Uh, <laughs> he's trapped. Yeah, he, he's a, he's a, he's at a darn ugly spot. <laughs> there you go, Gil. Put the link to his channel so you can go get it later. Yeah, but um, you know it's 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 all it's interesting. Um, I know some a lot of people are going to like. Uh, it's going to look kind of crazy watching someone solder and remove things and put new components on motherboards, but I'm a geek. I like to watch it. But the rants are good, too. You can check out the rant videos. 
when I worked yeah. at the casino, that was my job there. I was doing service mount technology or SMT repairs. Yeah, he does a lot of that. So you see him use the reflow stations um, and everything, the hot air station. Yep. Yeah, I still have some of the stuff. I don't have all of it. I don't have my air station no more. It's something I left up in Michigan for somebody else to have. It was a nice $2,000 solder station that had every bell and whistle you could ever want as a technician. I also had an oscilloscope, a tone generator, all that fancy stuff. Yep. And basically gave it away when I moved out of Michigan. <laughs> yeah, I've given, I've given away a lot of stuff in time. And I sometimes look back and go, why did I do that? Well, I didn't have any room in my Saturn. I had a Saturn that all I could move in, and there wasn't enough left after I put all my clothes and other stuff that I had to have with me, so I just let it go for nothing. And I'm still kicking myself in the rear end for doing it. Because even an old Tenma station is still worth its weight in gold. Well, it's like I had some uh, like some Amiga computers that actually had the video toaster from the back in the day. And I gave those away. And I'm like, I don't know why I did that. They're collector's editions now. I mean, they're worth a lot to collectors. Oh, yeah. You could go out and buy yourself a brand new Dodge Ram pickup. Probably. With that on it. It's just, it, yeah. Yeah, but that's what happens sometimes. That's why I never believe anyone who says they have no regrets. And I'm like, what'd you do? Nothing in your life? <laughs> like I said, Will, uh, 550 will build you a computer for, you know, and that's not counting shipping it back to you. But for 550, a computer can be built for you doing everything you need to do. Yeah, you can probably do that for a lot of chunk, a good chunk of stuff. The. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Charles punched me. <laughs> Invaded. Oh man. Oh, now people are getting back to answering my text from earlier. <laughs> uh, so how's everyone doing in the lockdown zone? Oh, what lockdown? Oh, I did Idaho not lock down any? Uh, it's just, you know, our county has a, has had a grand total of two cases. Yeah, see, like our, you know, I'm in a rural location too. Um, you know, it's funny, all this stuff that they were talking about everywhere and all these other things, it was really chill out here. And like our governor as a nutball as she is, she decided to try to force everyone to uh, all the gun stores to close. And so she sent the state troopers out telling people they had to shut down. And the gun stores here are like, forget you, we're still staying open. So even after troopers shut them down, they started doing stuff from their house. <laughs> so, uh, but other than that, things have been pretty good. Uh, but... Yeah, I've been on. I have a video I need to post real soon. I got a big rant on a bunch of the things. More and more data is coming out, and uh, it's just bad. Yeah. So, what other computer questions we got here? Let me see if I can get into the chat and actually see what's going on. Well, let's see. Oh, good. Now I got the chat. There we go. All right. Uh, Will was wondering, wondering, can you build one fairly cheap? Well, the question is on cheap is uh, what does it have to do? So if we're going to aim for it to do something extremely specific, it's possible. Um. You just got to be, it, it can be tough, but sometimes there's some budgets that are impossible to do. Oh, Pennsylvania Prepper sold her Commodore 128 and all that. Yeah, they're worth a lot more today, I know. I actually had some rare ones I kept, like um, I had some Deck Alpha PCs. They were pretty rare by today's standards, and they were real interesting computers, and I gave them away too. And I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see what other questions people got. 
Now, Pennsylvania Prepper was uh, has ha on her laptop was having problems with the uh, the cooling fan. Yeah, I've had, that. I've had that before. Um, yeah. What brand was it, Pennsylvania? And Dave, Dave told her, you know, he went through and you told her, you know, probably the best thing to do is, you know, get a new one, find some uh, 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 tech nearby, whatever, and get it changed out. You, know, you can pick, you, you know, I guess you can pick up a, a fan for around 20 bucks for, a, you know, most laptops. Yeah, there's a lot. You can look on eBay. There's a good chance of finding parts. Um, the other thing is, it's like done by, if it's a Lenovo, um, they actually have a parts store. You can go order the part directly from them. Um, I think Toshiba's got a part store too somewhere. I just can't remember what. I think it just. I bet Google can find a Toshiba laptop parts store or something like that. But also eBay, like you do, like enter, you know, the model number and then type fan, and I bet a bunch of them will pop up. Oh, we lost Dave. Oh, yeah, he's back. Hey, Dave pulled one of me. His internet went out. <laughs> oh, man. Good antivirus for Windows 7. Uh, I don't run antivirus. <laughs> I consider it as bad as the viruses with how many resources it sucks. I just am careful. <laughs> so I don't have a good answer for you, old man. <laughs> um, All I know is that when we were, when we were running the older stuff, the uh, the Norton just sucked our computer down to diddly squat running. Uh, then my wife got um, we had Kapersky for a few years till we found out you know where uh, it was coming from. The old uh, Boris and his friends, and uh, so I'm not sure what she's running on hers. Not um, what I got here. The one I got a friend of mine uh, put together for me and. I'm not sure what it has on it, but it's, I haven't had any problems. Knock on wood. Yeah. The, and stuff, uh, the, um, one of the brands of computers I like to use, um, is based on server architecture. And so it's called super micro and it's super micro.com. So S U P E R M I C I M I C. Ah, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll just type it. Um, oh, I can't post links. <laughs> but uh, Super can, Micro. Dave, is, can uh, you make him out? Give him Bullet Wrench. Let's see here. They are a server based type of system. So you can actually build a desktop with two terabytes of RAM and stuff. Although you're talking a $40,000 computer. So. <laughs> uh. Uh, actually, what you can do if you go to the private chat, you can put the link in the private chat, and then I can post it. Oh yeah, that'll work. There you go. Come on. There we go. Boom. There it is. Mm -hmm. Keep forgetting. Keep forgetting about private chat. <laughs> I do too. Now they have a lot of really nice stuff and uh, very, very well-made items. Always impressed with how, uh, how well their stuff's made. Um, it's more pricey. I mean, but you get what you pay for on this one. They do a very good job. And so you're going to pay a little more. Now, is it like going to cost as much as, I mean, it's not like outrageously expensive, but like, when you see a lot of motherboards go for, you know, uh, like $150 to $200, these ones are going to go like for $350 for the same sort of specs. Except they'll often be able to take more RAM, have more hard drive connectors and all sorts of stuff like that. All right. Hey, Gunslinger. Yeah, what I want, um, one of the problems, I don't know what, what what's the difference between the... Uh, the Dell laptops I have and the ones I had at work, but the ones at work, I could have um, six monitors on. And I can only get two monitors to work on this uh, the one here. 
Yeah, so they probably had one of the um Oh, what's the name of that thing again? Uh Oh, I'm, it's been a little while since I've used the Dell. I don't remember what I don't remember what the the upper one for the business class was, and things. But they also, if they have an express card slot, um, you can usually get an additional video adapter to put in there, so you can get more monitors hmm. and stuff. So if your if your current uh, Dell has an express card slot, you could get a card to have more monitors on it. Yeah, because I got the I got the docking same exact same docking station we used at work. So. Mm -hmm. And they have all the they got the things in the back to add more to it, and but it just it just doesn't seem to want to support more than just two uh, monitors on the one laptop here. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, actually, here you can go here. Also, here's something you could do. Put in the private chat. This company has all sorts of cool accessories, and okay. including uh, USB. Uh, dongles to add monitors. You can add a USB port and it'll add another uh, uh, monitor to your computer. You have to check them out. Now, it's not like a super high performance graphics spot, but it'll let you pull it on like text doc. I mean, it'll, it'll function. It'll do a lot of stuff, but don't try to play games on that adapter. Right. It's not made for that. Sorry about that. I had to almost call there and string two children up by their pinky toes and beat them with wet noodles. <laughs> it came close. A boy hit a girl and a girl hit a boy. Not acceptable. And for real fun, you guys can always put together a Raspberry Pi computer. Oh, don't, don't confuse them. It's fun. If you really like tinkering, and learning the ins and outs of things, then go buy a Raspberry Pi computer kit. It's about, well, most of them nowadays are smaller than a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, it's like 50 bucks or so. Mm -hmm. And thank you. But you're going to learn a lot. It's not a, not a, not an easy out of the box. Just get up and go. <laughs> a lot of people I found have gotten those things and, and gone, how the heck do I get this thing working? <laughs> Cause they thought it was something simple. Uh, let's see here. My patience level would be three minutes in. It would be in the drawer. Am I sick, a Democrat, or what? What are you into, Pennsylvania? What did I miss? That's what I was trying to figure out, but I missed it. She said she'll take the kids. Nah, I'll keep them. I may have to string them up by their pinky toes, but it'll be okay. You have not seen me with my evil, grumpy old man look on my face. Most kids get terrified quickly and usually... Oh, they said, they said you're blue. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dave, hmm. um, does uh, Reed have a wrench? I have no idea. Nope. No wrenches. I'm boring. Ugh. So how many other people out there during all the craziness... Instead of getting to stay at home, you got to work more. <laughs> I did. Oh my gosh, I got tons of extra work. Yeah, I went like I went to order a um, uh, a load of rock uh, to put in the, the. I was redoing the irrigation ditch, just putting pipe in, and they were so friggin' jacked up, busy. They lost my order. I called the next day. Like, what did they go? And they, oh, never mind. One, they got, got, I got one of the uh, supervisors over at the rock court. He goes, hang on, and he goes, we'll get it out to you today. And so, but yeah, uh, the, uh, the the construction guys are just going absolutely nuts because yeah, everybody's. Have, uh, it's they're, funny. They're, like, they tried. They were like all this stuff going crazy, but they have a building they're remodeling and, and renovating. It's the old chemistry building, and uh, they didn't stop at all there was like no stopping that every time i came in the crews were all out there tearing stuff out ripping things in putting new things in and i'm really confused because I, I was watching some of the stuff go in and i was like why do they have a bunch of iron pipe like cast iron pipe they're installing i gotta go ask someone and say what the heck do you use that for today <clears throat> i could not figure it out i was like thinking about that i'm like maybe the fire alarm i'm like these fire sprinklers use cast iron pipes I usually they use black iron. They usually use black iron pipe. 
That's what I thought. And this was stuff that you'd put together with like the clamps or weld it. And I was like, what is this used for? Sewer. You think the sewer? Sewer in an in a industrial building, they'll use they'll use cast iron instead of plas instead of ABS. Well, that's funny. Oh, okay. Someone else said that too. <clears throat> hey, read, type something yeah. in there, if you're able. Try to put a link in or something. Yeah. Oh, type, type something? Yeah, just say hi and I'll give you a wrench. Oh. Because you okay. should have a wrench by now. You are now part of the Smurf Nation. So now you can put your own links in. Woo oh, okay. That works. Cool. <clears throat> <clears throat> and Will says it's for the water. So I don't know. I'm just going to ask someone. I didn't yeah. see you were. But the you other funny thing like was I saw, I saw a bunch of drain waste vent PVC. So still confused. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so for your, 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 um, yeah, like uh, uh, P2E said, is that the uh, the the cast iron you know doesn't make as much noise as the uh, the uh, the ABS or the plastic. I'll be darned. Okay. Yeah, the black iron that looks like the stuff we use for um, natural gas lines. I know they use that for sprinkler systems. Yeah. It's heat resistant. <laughs> yeah, but. The the sprinkler system lines I haven't seen them that are you know three inches in diameter. Yeah, I mean the building ain't that big. <laughs> well, actually, you'd be surprised how big they run the, for the sprinkler systems. The inlets will be be like three inch uh, line coming in, and then as it starts going off, it branches down to two to the one, and if, you know they they don't usually go much smaller than one inch on the on the lines, and then uh, have a t a t to the head it will be three quarter. So they yeah, get the well, volume. Uh, like all the buildings where I'm at, all the sprinkler lines are one inch, like you said. But the incoming lines all a two incher. Yeah. Uh, the, all the water mains in our area are two inches and stuff. Yeah, I know. Like in the um, in the Bank of America data center in Concord, California, the uh, stem pipes going in there were four inch, and it was only a four story building. Uh -huh. Yeah, our our data centers, if they go off. Um, Get out. They use the oxygen displacement systems. Yeah. So you get your butt out. Yeah. The it's a it's actually yeah. real uh that stuff all used to be uh freon, a freon based system. Uh you know, all like real similar R twelve and stuff. And the idea was it would it was funny because you they have this uh bolt, they call it an explosive bolt, and they have a small explosive and a detonator charge. So when the fire alarm goes off, it sends it off, and it just busts open the the valve, and that thing just blows, uh, you know, freon throughout the whole system. Current systems today are called FM two hundred is the main one we use and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I know. I know at bank at the data center they had several rooms that you know that were secured rooms that were, were that way that had the, you know spe they had the flashing red and blue lights. If they went off, it was you have ten seconds. To get out of that room before it goes into lockdown. And, yeah. Uh, but for, uh, but then out in the regular office cubicles, where they had all the paperwork and stuff, they had the sprinklers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how it goes. Now, the only thing is, most people don't realize when those things go off, they cause a massive pressure wave. You can get your eardrums blown out um, and stuff for those high pressure systems. They also can cause quite a bit of computer damage. Yeah. Um, the thing is, the data drives are usually okay. Now, there's this other one I've seen, but it wasn't cost effective when we built our latest data center. That was a uh, fire suppressant foam, and so this foam would sort of like be sprinkled everywhere, and so you wouldn't have all these other issues. And it's supposed to put it out, but uh, I remember it was like four or eight times the cost of the current systems. I was just like, "What the heck? No way that's fitting in the budget." Yeah, Michael uh, Halon, you know. Yeah, has, been, has been kind of removed from most places, except for very specific ones. You used to be able to get hail on fire extinguishers you could get for your home. You buy the uh, and can't get them anymore. I actually have a hail on fire extinguisher in my office. Yeah, it's old. because because it depletes the ozone. Yep, it's literally freon. I mean, it's not exactly freon, but it's, it's very similar. In fact, you know, I'll just yeah. go look at it. 
Yeah. But, it's uh, all right, Lori, you're forgiven. It, 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 you've been dealing with an awful lot lately. Take any and all rest you need. Yeah, all right. Sugar, cookies, and iced tea. Yep. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's the. So the A Halon is also a brand name. So you can actually buy Halon fire extinguishers. I just hit one of the links, but it's not what the old Halon was. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I, hey, um, you, you don't want to be in the room with it. It will suck the oxygen right out of your lungs. Yeah, okay. So the original Halon is Freon 12B1. So it's a slight modification of Freon 12B. I mean, a, a Freon 12 and stuff. And so the idea is it sprays into the room and it displaces all of the oxygen. And it's also slightly heavier than air. Yeah. And so it'll smother the fires. The only problem is, is if you're in there breathing, um, you will not get oxygen yourself. Yeah. Now, what was interesting is that um, a lot of the um, kitchens, not home kitchens, but um, restaurant kitchens, commissaries, cafeterias, have a, had a Halon system installed for grease fires to put out the oh, you know, I can see that. It had it on there, and uh, the one they had at the, at the scout camp in California, uh, down in um, uh, Camp Herms, uh, right right up in the Berkeley Hills. There, it um, when it was put in, it was one of the last ones put in with the with the Halon systems, the old old system, and they still. It still has its full charge. They're not replacing it. They're going to keep that old canister until they have to use it. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You know, until they tell you you got to get rid of it. If it's not going to hurt anything to keep it uh, in a working service, I'd do it. It's yeah. one of our old data centers still has its Halon thing. It's never gone off. Yeah. So we're keeping it. Yeah. But for our computers at home, we don't have to worry about having one of those Freon systems to protect our computers yeah the only thing is the it's like when they first got lithium batteries going those were pretty dangerous <laughs> <laughs> i had one explode not too long ago yeah you know how many are going off was it just about 10 years ago every time you turned around some cell phone was blowing up some cell mm -hmm. phone was catching things on fire um mm -hmm. I think that's because people didn't know how to properly manage their batteries though you can't drain it charge it drain it charge it drain it charge it because the battery gets hot. When those lithium batteries get hot, the little pieces of paper and metal in between each other have a tendency to break down and they touch each other and they go. Well, all lithium batteries in electronics today, um, they all will have what's called a battery management system. Mm -hmm. And so the battery management system is to manage that sort of cycling correctly. The problem was is, um, they hadn't fully characterized uh, crystal formation in the early lithium cells. And so you'd end up with little spots where it's short and then just burn. And then it would just start a fire and just go. Now, what was that cell phone that was recent? The Galaxy Note 7 or something, right? Yeah. You know, that was the most recent one. So mm -hmm. they like really completely screwed the pooch on that one. So they miscalculated the swelling of the battery as it cycled. Because one of the things that the lithium, there's several types of lithium cells. And the lithium cells we use in electric cars and cell phones and laptops and computers and all that, they're very, very high energy density. And they're a little sensitive. And uh, they also, the ones on the cell phones, they're called a polymer lithium battery. And they tend to slightly change shape as they're charged and discharged. Well, Samsung got it wrong. So, um, yeah, they... Uh, they decided to just blow up. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing along the same lines for, uh, on the ba the lithium batteries was that hoverboard. And they, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, they plug them and charge them and they'd, they would leave the house and come back. Their house is burnt down because the hoverboard battery went poof. Now, when you are out, go outside of consumer electronics, um, drones are one of the ones I know of. Uh, people that do their own DIY lithium systems, all that, you can have those not have battery management systems. 
and it's up to you to maintain those things correctly. And lots of people have uh, set things on fire from not being careful. And it's mismanagement of the battery. They drain it completely dead so the item wouldn't work at all, which mm -hmm. is not good because the internal battery management is supposed to stop that from happening, but people would push it, then they would put it on fast charge so they could ride it again in 10 minutes. And rather than letting it fully charge and rest, or actually they should have just let it rest first and then charged it and then let it rest and then ride it, they'd ride it, charge it, ride it, charge it, ride it, charge it. And that creates such an imbalance within the pack itself that the heat causes everything to melt. Mm -hmm. it, it, well, that's it's a pretty blue flame that comes out of them when it comes out. It's pretty. The what is it? That's why Tesla's battery pack they have liquid cooling in there to manage the thermal properties and stuff and things. Otherwise, you'd have a flaming explosion going down the highway at least once a day. There's um there's some really good videos on YouTube um, of people messing around with lithium batteries and being dumb. And I'm just glad I wasn't the one doing it. But I've seen people like get a sledgehammer, smash one, and it goes off like a bomb. And then they're running around screaming. And it's like, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> See, I, I used to run a lot of RC stuff. And when lithium batteries first came out, a lot of even the professional RC companies wouldn't put lithium batteries out for their pro drivers because they were unstable because you oh. had to have a proper charger in order to charge them. Oh, I fully believe it. Cause like, you know, one thing that was nice about the old RC cars, I, I busted with them a lot when I was a kid. I, I really loved them. I just, I really should get back into that. But remember the old, you know, 7.2 volt battery packs we all use, they were nickel cadmium and they were also, um, you know, nickel metal hydrate. Those things could be abused horrifically. And then they would still work. You didn't have to worry about them. I mean, they would get hot. You would wear them out faster. But you didn't have to worry about them blowing up. They, they, you know, they were, they, you could be abused the heck out of them. Problem is, tons of people were used to that. And then they got a hold of lithium. And then they really messed themselves up. Oh, boy. Race watched their $2,000 RC car explode into a ball of flames. Yeah. Oh, actually, you guys, now I'm on, now you got me thinking of something else. For another really cool thing for computers. Okay, there's a couple all-in-one kits that are really neat, and they're great home little starter computers. One is called the Intel NUT, NUC, Next Unit of Computing. And they're a great little uh, easy-to-get-going system. The other one is an Intel, what they call a uh, compute stick. So you've seen like those Amazon Fires, you know, that you plug into a TV? It's a computer instead. So you plug it into like a monitor or TV on the HDMI port, and then you plug the keyboard and mouse and all that off of the USB port and uh it's a whole computer it's, it's really neat here let me dig up a link for people um and then, so if you want like something that's got a lot of stuff put together and we're not talking like a gaming station and all sorts of stuff like that if you want something to do regular everyday things i have set up a lot of those for uh like my family my old dad who just wants to use his email and everything else um, for a quick, easy solution to get someone going. Uh, I quite like them for just an easy thing to go. And there's lots of lots of version of these. Um, yeah, I'm, I just looked up, you know, Intel, uh, NUC 10, 8, etc. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Staples has the Intel NUC 10 for um, 760 bucks. Uh, uh, you can get the uh, NUC 8 for 730 but yeah, yeah, they're a great, easy, easy way to get a, a little computer to do stuff. Um, like if you need to set something up for a kid, a small kid to do things with or other things, they're super nice. Let me grab the compute stick too. It's like, but the reason why I also thought of them when we're talking about batteries is uh, I've seen plenty of people modify these to run off battery power. And so you can get a solar panel and stuff going and driving them because they don't need much energy. Hmm and stuff i was like oh that's neat and stuff um and things darn it if i can type the right thing here uh, da, da, da. okay let's see do they still make the compute stick
Interesting. Yep, they do. Let me post the compute sticks and you guys can see these things. So if you want something like super easy to mess with, there you go. Um, now remember, it's not like a, um, you know, you know, super powerful things, but there's a lot of power for what they are today. It's it's actually really amazing how much power we can stick into a little tiny thing these days. And that, get that open here. Uh, I'm Oh, Pennsylvania Prepper, um, the reason why, how's the way to explain this? Okay, I, I'll try to explain this an easy way for you. Hopefully I won't um, confuse the heck out of you. Um, but basically, the battery is aged, okay? And so what it is is the battery as it ages develops internal resistance. And so even though the battery technically has 20 or 30% charge left in it, the problem is, is the battery gets to a point where it can no longer support the power requirements of your phone. And so the, it just shuts off and it's annoying as heck. And it's one of the effects of as batteries ages. It's like, um, regular, like, uh, double a batteries that were rechargeable and all that stuff. As they get really old, you find that they only work in like small little devices. They can't drive like the cell phone, I mean, not the cell phone, the, you know, the digital cameras anymore. It's like that. And you get to regulate them to just the remote is that their internal resistance builds up, builds up inside. And then they can no longer support the uh, power requirements of those bigger devices and your phone. That's what happens. It just can no longer support the power draw. So even though there's some left in it, it doesn't have the ability to act, uh, to actually provide the power and it just dies. I know that's probably not the best thing you want to hear. <laughs> yes, it is good. It's a renewable battery. You just go get a new one. So I really miss renewable ba re removable batteries and cell phones. I replaced a battery in one of my uh, cell phones a while back. And like the first step in there was get a heat gun and prepare to melt the glue. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it was, it was, it was a process guys. It was a crazy process of heating this up. And pulling with a suction cup to pull the, the glass away and separate it and then get all this stuff. And I had to get like this plastic thing to pry this battery thing out. And oh, it was so bad. And uh, I was cursing the whole time. Dang you, just people engineering obsolescence into our stuff. Careful. God love it. I mean, I'm. You know. And it, uh, it goes kind of the one of that's one of the things that's really annoying is like I honestly detest the chiclet keyboard on modern laptops. I hate them to death. And there is no one that doesn't sell a chiclet keyboard on a laptop. At least not that I've seen. Um, so it's one of the rants I have on that. Ugh. I would rather have a mechanical keyboard. I like the tactile feel and knowing I hit it because with my hands the way they are now. I type on my laptop, then I read what I've typed, and it's like, that makes no sense. Oh, I, I can agree with you on that, because, like, um, I mean, you probably learned on a real typewriter, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when I took typing class in school, we had typewriters and computers, and they were, like, the Apple IIs. They were real clunky. And so I learned that way, too. So I want a lot of travel in the keys, and I want, like, the that feel of, like, when it goes, when you feel it, just, like, go click. Yeah, I was always really good on the, um, on the on, on the on the big like the IBM M101 keyboard is my favorite. I really love that keyboard. The closest uh, thing I found for me personally, and I've only tried a couple different ones, but for me the best one I've ever found are keyboards from Razer. Oh, I've seen those. I have. They're on my list to try. They're still pretty pricey, but they look good. Um, you get that tactical, tactile, mechanical feel when you push it. You feel it actually make the connection. Oh, nice, nice. I so we're two old fuddy duddies here talking about how much we like the old feel. <laughs> All right, uh, Pennsylvania uh, Prepper asks, "What's a chiclet?" And you know the type of keyboard you were talking about there. It's everything mm -hmm. wrong in the world. Well, look at any Apple laptop. That's a chiclet keyboard. Every single one of them is a chiclet keyboard. 
<laughs> Fishes and loaves. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, anyone else remember Necco wafers? Mm -hmm. I still buy them at the gas station. Yeah, there's a couple places I know that still sell them. I like them. My favorite's always been the chocolate flavor. There's something I like about them. It was funny. I was watching some young people like review them on YouTube and going, Ew, how could anyone like this? <laughs> Just like you know, you put in the comments. The survival of food you're going to need to eat now tastes just like those, so you better get used to it. <laughs> oh, actually, survival tablets because they taste like the chick, uh, the chico wafer. That's true. It's like, um, you know, I, I have the so I've been dying laughing because I've noticed um, all these people buying whatever they could get their hands on for um, survival food and stuff because you know the current worldwide crisis everyone's going nuts you know and the the beer disease i'm calling it the beer disease i don't know if that's the code word you guys are using okay. um, there you go but um so people have bought survival food and then occasionally so i've been noticing youtube videos of we decided to try this oh my gosh this is horrible because they bought you know whatever they could find <laughs> they had no idea what they were getting into <laughs> the number yeah. of ones i've seen those people buy those um it's not hard tech, but it's like those like survival uh, that the survival bars that you put in like the life rafts or something. I, what's the mainstay? It's mainstay, the, the mainstay bars, and they're like, "This is horrific! How could you live on this?" I'm <laughs> just like, "Easy, oh, wait, 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 wait. eat it so you don't die." Yeah, wait till you get hungry enough; it'll taste good. And actually, the mainstay ones aren't the worst. Uh, I've, day, I've tried day, some stuff. Daytrex, Daytrex, mainstay's not bad. Daytrex are the nasty ones. That, I don't have yeah, I don't. And uh, the other one of the one of the ones that's like a mainstay bar that I like is a uh, the new Millennium Energy bars. Yes, they have like the cranberry, the orange, the lemon. Those ones I like pretty well. Those are they get they got a fla enough flavor to them. They actually oh, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the ones my son loves the most. Oh, really? Yeah. He was from Walmart. My son ate the whole package. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he just loves it. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Um, was it, I think Millennium, Millennium yeah. was uh, it's a big, it's, it was sold really big on um, uh, emergency. Um, oh, emergency be prepared. Be prepared .com. Yeah. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of them um on a super sale a while back like two years ago yeah. and i'm still working my way through that box because <laughs> um, i'll often uh pack them on when i'm doing stuff because they're a good little just boost of energy and thing like that and they've only got what is it a five year so you got to rotate them out right and yeah. stuff, um and things the but I, I just been laughing like crazy and then what stank about it though is all this started happening when mountain house brought out their new uh, year uh, changed out the supply line for the year so they were phasing out and then bringing in new stuff and some of the new stuff I bought like a couple because I got it just right at the edge of when they was doing before everything went crazy because I wanted to try the new flavors so like they had pad thai they had um, a yellow curry chicken and a lot of them I was like hey these are great I want a bunch more nothing to be found it's gone <laughs> So I got a wish list of things. Okay, I'd like to more of these, please, later. <laughs> yeah. They're talking about giving out a, another stimulus to GP, general public. For yeah, I was saying years. that. And if they do, I'm going to, I will, I will beg, borrow, steal, beat somebody over the head for the extra 500. I'm going to buy me a freeze dryer. That's a good idea. I'm, you know, actually, I think I'm going to, I'll do, yeah. if they do that, I'm going to do the same thing. Find I really to have get it. more canned goods than I can fit in my cupboards. I've got canned goods in my bedroom. I've got them underneath the sinks. I've got them sitting on the counter. I've got some behind this chair. So mm -hmm. if I can freeze dryer, I can freeze dry everything and it's not good for 25 years. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to store a Mylar bag with a can's worth of stuff or two cans worth in it than it is the hard can itself. And, and for anyone know. wondering, Pennsylvania Prepper, who's in the chat, she has a freeze dryer, and she does all sorts of neat little things on it. Yeah, and she was even did one. Uh, uh, was was I don't know, was Pennsylvania Prepper or uh, old school uh, Prepper was talking about um, double bagging things because oops, this happened. You know, I, you, you, 
you do you you your one bag and you stick that inside of another bag, you know, with several of them in there. Oh, and anyone who starts vacuum sealing or freeze drying, because I do a lot of vacuum sealing of stuff, and I put them in mylar with the oxygen absorbers. I have a vacuum sealer for mylar, right? There's a major difference between the cheapy bags you can find off of some Amazon retailer and a premium bag, like massive difference. Um, I lost so much stuff to buying the cheapy bags because I thought Mylar was Mylar. Boy, was I wrong. You know, go get the thicker. Um, how thick? Does anyone remember how many mils thick is the premium bag? I'd have to get mine out real quick to look. Um, I think I've got some three, five, and six mils. Yeah, Pennsylvania Prepper posted seven mils. Yeah. So I think mine are six or seven too. Um, they work so much better than anything else. Uh, that in a, a good vacuum seal mylar bag actually has ripples near the very enter ex, uh, near the end of it, so it'll actually suck it out more like a tr traditional uh, vacuum seal bag. Where your standard cheapy mylar bags, you try sucking the air out of them, and it don't work with a crap. The well, the ones I use, I have a the, um, I have a specific <laughs> freeze dryer for mylar, so it's not like the food saver ones, and so it's a different design, um, and so it. You end up with something that's like what you would buy at um, the commercial stores um, and stuff, and it uh, and stuff. But um, uh, sorry, guys, the my allergies have been killing me. I don't know about you guys, but my my allergies here have been bad. I walked uh, around and sneezed and coughed all the way there and all the way back home. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we had tons and tons of water this winter, and which is great because I live in a desert, right? Well, the only thing is, like, everything that could grow is growing. And now I'm going, <laughs> But, yeah, so find the best Mylar bags that you can for your freeze dryer. I mean, not freeze dryer, for your vacuum sealer. Whatever is the best for your stuff, get that. Yeah. You know? And thank that you. I honestly don't know, old man, but the cheese has a tendency, if it's properly waxed, to last quite a while. Yeah. Oh. Age. I'm going to dig a link up for you, old man. It's cool. There is a university. They're the only one in the U.S. that makes cheese in a can that will store indefinitely in the fridge. And I'm not talking little canned cheese. I'm talking, you know, like five pounds in a huge can. It's wild. And it's also one of the best cheeses you can buy. Um, let me find it up real quick. <laughs> yeah, I know. <clears throat> I do not I know there were, they were, there were, the, there was the quote, the government cheese. Uh, back in the 70s and 80s where they were getting the wax cheese and putting it in freezers for long-term storage. Texan, I don't watch Barry Independent because anybody that says he's going to go out and kill people to take what he wants uh, is not worth my time. And he, I'm with you on that one. On one of his videos, he said if crap hits the fan, he'll go out and take what he wants from people. And if that means he has to kill them for it, that's what he's going to do. That's not somebody I want anywhere near me or my family. Because yeah, there's a interesting. There's a pile of people I've put in the same list because, um, yeah, exactly. That's exactly because when things are going crazy like that, you don't want to have to worry about the people behind you starting to stab you. Exactly. Right. Yeah, you got to come together to get through things. Okay, here you guys go. This is the this is an awesome, cool thing I've tried. I mean, it's wild. We bought one and we're like, wow. Um, it's something I never heard about before until I ran across it. So check this out, guys. It's it's crazy. Take a look, old man. See, you can check out some cougar canned cheese. <laughs> and uh, um, okay. apparently it was funded back by the government in the war times because they were looking for other ways they could preserve food longer to get it to the troops, um, get it for um, – uh, transportation in the U.S. and all sorts like that, and they came up with a canned cheese method, and it's really neat. Um, there's a lot of, you know, it's crazy. Wartime often pushes us to our limits of trying to figure out how can we accomplish things, how can we do things, and you know, this is what you see. Some of these kind of things pop up, and it's really amazing. Yeah, Washington State University. Oh, wait a minute, isn't that where the the red hoozy struck first? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that is a comment that was just put up by fishes and loaves. <laughs> they milked the cougar. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, good grief. But well, that's funny. Yeah. Good one there. 
Good one. Oh man. Yeah. Now uh, I noticed back earlier that um, uh, Pennsylvania Prepper mentioned that um, Harvest Right is back ordered on some of their. Yes. Yeah. They're horrifically back ordered right now. Everyone. Yeah, but, but I here they got all sorts of sales special offers going on right now. Well, you place an order. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I've got an inside line to the company that when I can, if I can get most of it, they will give me a discount because I told them I would do a review on my channel. And so they yeah. offered me a, whenever I need to use it, discount. I, I like this. This uh, 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 plant-based pros is selling uh, at, at a higher rate than the Harvest Right ones are. That's because they probably got one in stock and Harvest Right don't. Yeah. Well, everything from my scene, the Harvest Right one looks the best. It is. Um, and it, if you're going to buy one, I would definitely add the extra cost to get the oilless compressor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oil is a royal pain in the arse. Yeah. And I uh, and I also hear that the uh, oilless <laughs> one is a heck of a lot quieter. It is. Yeah. yeah. And for me, living in a public apartment like I do, I would need it as quiet as possible. Yeah. Otherwise, my neighbors are going to be complaining. Even though I Don't you just love people to complain all the time? It's like, um, I would, some, some of the, did you guys see that HOA that threatened to kick people out of their homes because they were working at home, f being forced to work at home because of the disease going around? And so the HOA took an issue with it and tried to kick them out? Yeah, it's, that's government politics at its best. Yep. I, I know. It's just, People both surprise me and then depress me at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. After watching all this, I'm not surprised anymore. Yeah, the one thing about all this stuff going on, it's uh, been an immense learning exercise. Lots of things that we have discussed, theorized, hypothesized as preparedness individuals. We've always had, well, this could happen. This might happen. This might be the response. Now we got concrete data. And I've taken this as an outstanding learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, oh, definitely, definitely a learning experience, especially even for us as, you know, preppers, we can all learn from this too, because yep. it definitely will highlight any holes we have. Oh yeah. I found, I mean, like I always, I, one of my rants I always say is anyone who says they are fully prepared is not. <laughs> well, I've been working. I, someone's I, fully prepared. I've been doing emergency preparedness since 1971. I'm still not fully prepared. That was my job at Homeland Security. It was the emergency management coordinator getting every, you know, prepared. You know, you know, there's just, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It just takes time. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to do it overnight. It's impossible unless you're yeah. a billionaire. Yeah. Well, even the, even the billionaires and the government and all those things, they always find stuff they've missed. They always do. It's like when you read like those FEMA after action reports and they talk about us like that, you all, they see all these things, you know, you know, where they talking about, we have to fix this. We found this deficiency. We found that deficiency um, stuff that used to be very important to stock up and, and have around like was a change. Like I was at a FEMA training, um, like I think two years ago and stuff like that, because they were going around to a lot of places and they were talking about what well, their new most demanded item they have now after a disaster is pop tarts so it's it's so thanks change all the time so even when you think you got it figured out there you go yep i got a box of them now well actually i got one of the big boxes yeah yeah my lady loves uh uh brown sugar uh pop tarts they're her favorite and that's so, what i just had <laughs> oh sorry the window's kind of small i didn't catch it all the way gil yeah that's the uh Pull one out here. There you go. Brown sugar cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> those are her favorite. And uh, the darn things keep forever, practically. I mean, well, yeah. a long time. Um, yeah. And stuff. Shit, I pulled ones out of a, a 10 year old MREs and they were perfectly fine. <laughs> but but they call them toaster pastries or something like that. The toasterettes, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the. Um... I think that's the Kellogg's brand version of Pop-Tarts. 
Oh, okay. But it's you always and but yeah, all the stuff we've seen going on has been a, a very very good thing for us to take lessons, see how things affect your region, see what demand's gone, and then it's like everyone running out to buy toilet paper, and stuff, which was it's really interesting to me because I've wondered in my mind is that because the news media had talked so much about how toilet paper is the number one valuable item in Venezuela. Toilet paper is the number one item in Venezuela. Did it get into the subconscious partially mm -hmm. that way? And there, then was, there, was a Facebook there was a Facebook post out back in there at the beginning of um, someone was saying that the, that the red dragon will give you the runs. But prior to that, but even far back in the, in the 1971 Silmar earthquake, one of the first things that disappeared from the stores for some reason back in 1971 was toilet paper. Oh, Every major disaster since then, toilet paper is the first thing gone from the stores. That just cracks me up. It really does. I, yeah. I just find it so funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's cheap and easy to carry. Just problem is they forgot if they ain't got no food to eat, then they don't really need all that TP. Hence, a lady who tried taking a full grocery cart back in for a return. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. There was also that guy <laughs> in uh, Australia that um, the, they tried to take like 10,000 rolls of toilet paper back in some obscene amount of um, hand sanitizer. And the store is like, no, you you stuck with this. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, was, there were some signs on a couple of the Costco saying... Um, these items are not eligible to be returned. Toilet paper, oh. hand sanitizer, uh, paper towels. And they went through, they had like 10 different things on there that people were hoarding. And they say, nope, you can't bring it back. Yeah, I saw those. And I actually took a photo of them because I'm like, okay, so I know what some of the things were. And one of the other things was that was a real good education was how bad the profiteers and price gougers were. So you can imagine, you can see how these uh, like ticket scalpers effectively, they're going to go in, do whatever they can to leverage a position, you know, run up their credit cards, all this other stuff, thinking they're going to make some wild profit. And instead, they've complicated everyone's life and made it much worse. Yeah. And some of the ones that are on their turning around and selling at high prices are getting busted and losing everything. Well, do you guys see the FBI busted a guy in uh, New York? who had gone out and purchased 83,000 in 95 masks mm -hmm. and was selling them at a 700% markup. Yeah. Or the other guy in New York that had a garage full of hand sanitizer, over 17,700 bottles of hand sanitizer and Amazon told him, no, you're not selling it. Yeah. I'm, I'm real happy eBay and Amazon shut him down for good. They said, you're never allowed to use our black, sell things here. And, I so, like, I like what uh, ba, uh, Bama Backwoodsman said. I'd rather have a lot of anti-diarrhea tabs than a load of TP. Yeah, they're a lot smaller. <laughs> a lot smaller. <laughs> Two hundred tablets. Just be careful with those guys. Um, uh, you can get horrifically constipated if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't know what that's like, eat an MRE. That's why, <laughs> that's why I don't recommend buying a whole bunch of MREs. Buy a few to supplement other food. Yeah. yeah. So they I usually keep like MREs a case. I usually keep two cases of MREs around. Um, <laughs> one is so that if I had to leave right away, I could throw a case in the car and go. And, you know, it wouldn't be great, but, you know, that's fine. But the other one is like you could pack it in a bag. So, like, if you're going out for day hikes or going to someplace to go do stuff. You, it's an easy meal to load up. Can I stuff. Have you? But um, for those people that you see that have like those, I mean, like a whole shelf, I mean, like a whole, you know, baker's rack full of them from floor to ceiling of cases of them. I'm just staring at that going, oh, they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. The um, back, you, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen this for years. But Costco used to have the Mountain House um, bucket. It's like the um, like a five gallon oh, yeah. rectangular bucket, 
uh, the 72 hour kits or, you know, the different things, but yeah. Um, well, we, used to, we got a, we got a bunch of those, uh, years back and those are ready to, to grab and go if we need, need be. But then we, we re, re, repackaged it. So it's got, instead of being 72 hours, it's more like 96 hours. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The- inside chat, understand why MREs bind you up so bad. It's a very small secret, mostly known to service people. Well, they don't want you going to the bathroom so much so you skip, you lose your post either. Exactly. <laughs> That's why they originally designed to make you slightly constipated. So you weren't in the foxhole in the middle of a firefight having to go. The, now, the other thing I think an MRE is good for is I think it's a decent barter item. I think it's got enough name recognition it would make a good barter item. Mm-hmm. But um, that supposition, guys, you know, I have not had to go barter things for my life yet. So Me neither. <laughs> take, take, well, your, take your pick. One of the ladies that brings uh, Charles's lunch stuff for, from school for the week, uh, the first time she came out here, she said she actually gave away a six-pack of beer for a roll of toilet paper. Really? Interesting. Yeah. I told her, I said, look, if you need DP, you just come see me. I'll, I'll, excuse me. I don't need no beer, but, you know, just mm-hmm. come see me. We'll get you taken care of on TP. She says, you got it off. Said, yeah. All right. Prep setting with uh, Nana Brenda Ask what is a good vacuum sealer? Dave, I got it up. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> well, you're the one agreeing with me is the uh, you know the food saver. Yeah. Oh, food, okay. Yeah, a food saver. If you're going to buy it, spend the money on it. Don't skimp on your food, your sealers. Yeah. Um, Let me pick up the one I use. Um, it's a very different design, um, but it's made mainly for mylar systems. Yeah. It's got a higher heating element for one. Yes. I I just for my mylars I use a flat iron, you know, a lady's hair flat iron. That's what I see my mylars with. All right, and do they wait? Where's this link go? Sorry, guys, I'm trying to find something and I'm like losing my brain here. I gotta go get a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Right. <laughs> oh, here yes, it is. Okay. Here, I'll put it in the private chat for you to bring up, Gil. All right. The um, we've been using um, the Food Saver brand. The actually the one we've been using is the uh, one of the, one of these ones here. You know, the cheap ones here on uh, at Scout Camp for decades, and that will you'll use it for about um, four or five years, and then they'll give it away to somebody, and they'll buy a new one. Just so they always have has when it works all the time. Uh, you said in private there it popped up in private chat. Yeah, I just said it. This one is really, really good for mylar. I, it works really well. Um, it's a kind of an odd one, but mm-hmm. it does a great job. And I have a video on my channel I will dig up for you guys where I actually show how to seal a full five gallon bucket, vacuum seal the entire five gallon bucket in mylar with this little vacuum sealer. All right, so there's that and stuff. Um, but any any vacuum sealer you guys can find and get is better than none, <laughs> most of the time. Most of the time, there are stuff that sometimes is so bad you don't even want it around. But <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, <coughs> there we go. <coughs> Wanted to save that link. So yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Good night, Texan. Night, Texan. Hey, Blue Healer. Hey. Cool. I ran into you in a live chat the other day again, too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's a. Uh, if you're just using the regular. Um. Uh, uh, Vacuum seen to uh, not using the mylar, but the regular ones. Um, what we used to do if a scout, when the scouts and scout came, we would take the, the regular um, um, food saver and we put two seals across it, top and bottom, 
because we'd be giving the, the, the scout something like chili in there for him to throw in a boiling pot of water to heat up. And so we want to make sure it didn't come loose on him. Yeah, I just posted a link if you guys are curious. It shows how to use a vacuum sealer and seal one of these five-gallon buckets. It's kind of an odd technique, but it actually works really well, and I've had really good luck with it. All right, it starts at 100. That one you said starts at 120. Hey. See here, it shows a bigger. You know, they used to sell it on Amazon, but it's like Amazon's weird. They're kind of like Walmart. Things go in and out of stock a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Home unit. Uh, they saved Texan. Oh, they did? They did get rid of that? You know, it's wild what YouTube decides they're going to take out, I mean, take away, change, and all this stuff. I'm also really disturbed by watching um, these companies decide that there will be an arm of the government under themselves accountable only to who they feel like and censorship and censor anything they disagree with. I'm just like, this is wrong on so many levels. No, not only that, but the, um, the intro I've used in my videos for the last two years is now getting copyright striked. Really? Yep. What are they claiming? Uh, they're claiming that they own the song. Oh. And the other night when I had the sound of the shofar in my video, Sony Music said it was a song, Hallelujah, and they threw a copyright strike against me for that, too. Oh, good grief. Well, I've heard of people, like, singing... <laughs> Doing their singing something they wrote or something like that and getting copyright striked. I mean, all sorts of stuff. And well, they're losing their money everywhere else. So now they're trying to make it off, off YouTubers' videos. Well, I'm not monetized, so you're not going to get nothing off me. Yeah, no kidding. Ugh. There's a guy, there's a couple channels um, on YouTube that are actually like half a million subscribers and such. And they never monetized because they didn't want to deal with the politics of the right. mess. They're like, you know, I'll just make, I'll just support myself differently. And I, and I, and I have to admire that. I do think that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I started a donation fund a long time ago and it's got zero dollars in it. And I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh oh, eh, sorry. My computer's being a little silly today. I keep trying to do too much. Yeah. Uh, okay, and those are when he was talking about it. The uh, the NUC Intel NUC, if you just Google Intel NUC, it comes up all sorts of uh, different versions of it there, and clones made by other companies, so you can get AMD versions and stuff like that. There's all sorts of neat options there. Um, yeah. so if you're looking for a little all in one to play with, that'd be a good something to mess with. Um, <laughs> and then like uh SOP pointed out there's lots of nice YouTube videos out there of people showing how to put these in the case. I mean, uh, not the NUC, but I mean, a general computer, like how to build one from scratch, put it together and all these other things. And um, it's like an AR-15. It's plug and play. Yeah. Well, yeah it, it's really one up here again. Um, go back here. Videos of people putting a PC together. You realize it's really easy. You know, I, I've worked on laptops, so laptops are even for most shops most shops don't like touching laptops because they are so delicate and finicky and if you get that ribbon cradle in there the wrong way you can short things out or mm -hmm. really stuff so a lot of shops don't like working on laptops i i don't have a problem with that i've been doing it for too many years i still don't like doing it but i don't have a problem doing it yeah the, one of the things i always um hated on laptops sometimes was Certain brands of laptop, when you take them open and start have to get things apart, it, you you start making sounds. It sounds like you're utterly destroying it as you're getting it apart. <laughs> you hear a crack and a thunder. It's like, did I just break this? I know. I know. All right. So there's the video. I'll throw the link in here again. And yeah and the parts this guy lists they're decent parts i mean i'm not used to the full 
pro, you know, the product name, but um, I did a little extra research on it and they seem to be reliable. And that's the key. You want something that's reliable. Now I'm personally used to ASUS boards, Gigabyte and MSI boards, but there are other options out there too. And then here's the... See, I, I really like my MSI boards because the boards I used to use a long time ago were safety overclockable. You could keep trying to overclock it. And if you got, and you'd write down the numbers, uh, and if you got to a point right. where it wouldn't work, it would reset back to default without you having to do anything because it was a dual BIOS system. And you, you overclock it to where you could. When you went too far, you just start over and go back to where it worked and leave it there. Yeah, I used MSI a lot. They're they were really they're really good. They still are today. Um, One of the they're a more budget friendly option too. Yeah, I would say that's definitely true. Um, Asus I've used a lot too. Uh, let's see what other. Yeah, Asus and MSI were two of the ones I used a lot um, putting stuff together. Um, and they're really good brands. There's some oddball ones that have popped up I've seen here and there. Um, I would really recommend people stick with a brand that's been around for a long time. So MSI has been around at least since the early nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I actually have a gigabyte board upstairs in my desktop that needs to be rebuilt, but it's old technology and I probably won't rebuild it unless I build it for a server station to house you know, files and stuff. And Gigabyte's another good old company. They've been around a long time too. Yeah. Gigabyte produced from the first dual processor board that I used. Oh, okay. If I ever build another custom PC again, I'm going to go with another dual processor board. Put dual or dual quad cores on it. The uh, <laughs> man, it's funny thing about dual processors and stuff. And now, you know, it's like 64 cores on one chip. Yeah, I've seen those. And I've seen the price tag on it and ran back to the bathroom. <laughs> and stuff. I mean, I shoot, you see cell phones now, eight core processor. You're like, wow. You know, and then you see like um, cell phones now. I've, there's, I've seen cell phones advertised with 12 gigs of RAM. It's just unreal. <laughs> oh. Just unreal. I remember when a uh, hard drive with 500 gigabyte or yeah, 500 gigabyte. was insane. You know, nowadays it's like, uh, that's not even enough to store the operating system anymore. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Very true and stuff. Yeah. But in the early nineties, when I started putting some stuff together um, and I remember as a kid, Ram was uh, $40 a megabyte. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now I can buy servers with two terabytes of RAM. I remember we were talking about that in the 90s saying, well, do you think we'd ever get something like a terabyte of RAM? Oh, no, that would never happen. <laughs> it, would, it just wouldn't be feasible in cost. And Yeah, I remember the same conversations. Oh, yeah. It's actually like um, uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory has a nice history of their supercomputers. Mm -hmm. And like one of the first um, Cray supercomputers they got back then it had one gigabyte of RAM. And back then, that was a complete new level of performance. <laughs> yeah, now they got computers that are doing hundreds of teraflops of processing per second. And yeah. It's phenomenal what these things can do. They also take the amount of power as a small city. Mm -hmm. it, it's pretty wild. You know, and actually, I kind of laugh when all these... Uh, <laughs> Uh, people are talking about, we need to be more green. We got to get rid of all these things, get rid of this fuel, get rid of that fuel and all that. I'm like, you're going to need nuclear reactors to support all these data centers. And you don't realize how much power they're sucking down. Oh, and the mainstream media won't tell them either. No, no, they won't. They, they hide reality. They don't want people to see reality. Uh, when I was young and stupid, I used to think the news was telling the truth. Yeah. I learned that was wrong pretty quick. Yeah. I think we all did. Well, back when we had guys like Walter Con Concrete who tried to tell the truth. Sort of. Yeah. Not so much anymore. Yeah. But Walter, hey, Walter, Walter Winchell was a good one. Well, it's like, you know, it's like the way they write it. They want a narrative like that. It's like, how much do they push, like, 
um, Thomas Edison was like the greatest inventor and this great guy and all this stuff. When you go look at the real history of Edison, uh, the dude was a nasty, nasty person. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like when um, the feud between him and Tesla was, you know, oh. oh. Yeah, Bam, I understand that. But the problem with some of that is um, there's not much U.S. manufacturing right now. Yes. A lot of the stuff is actually coming from China. Well, so also the... Um... It's prime eligible. And the seller, because I just dealt with that with this little guy. Let me get that off the screen. Yeah. This little UV thingy mm. for uh, decant decontaminating things. And originally, before I wrote the seller and gave them a nasty gram two miles long, um, it made it sound like it was coming from here in the U.S. But it was off, 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 so off. After three days of not seeing it moving, I contacted him. Well, it has to come to the U.S. Customs first. Excuse me? Your post made it sound like it was here in the U.S. It took me two, week, two weeks and three days to get this. Yep. This, one ain't, this one's kind of broken. Yeah, I've, I've run into that a lot. Like, one of the other things I've vowed I will not buy on Amazon anymore is seeds. I am sick of ordering seeds that you look right, the, the whole thing looks good and all that. You order it, and then you get a customs label, and it's from China. And they have like a, they also lie on the customs label and market as gift because you know all that stuff has to go through and get the approval of the agricultural the, I mean uh, whatever the USGA or something like that and so they're lying sending all this stuff in I'm looking at the seeds I ordered and I'm like I don't even think this is for the plant I ordered so I've refused to plant any of these ones that come from out of country I'm like the heck with it I'm going to trusted seed companies that yeah, yeah. not doing this invasive species that wind up terrorizing. Yeah, very possible. Very possible. I, I'm sorry, my, my sense of humor just kicked in on it on this. Oh crap! Yes, yes, that's exactly what you should should be thinking. What my, what mine we just went to. It's how they're going to import the red dragon now. <laughs> in oh, seed God. in seed pods. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah, so here's a here's a here's an old school joke for you guys. What do you call a vegetarian with diarrhea? Salad shooter. See, that should have been on the dad joke video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the old salad shooter. <laughs> you remember those commercials? <laughs> oh, jeez. Day, and we all of us here are laughing. You all know how old we are. <laughs> uh, 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 I remember the old Ronco commercials, especially around the holidays, where every other commercial was a Ronco commercial. Mm -hmm. And there were some shows where the Ronco commercials were actually the highlight of the show. Mm, man. Uh, all right, all right. There, there you go. There you go, Dave. The salad shooter. Oh, do they still make it? I'll be darned. Yeah. yeah wow. The Presto salad shooter. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's cool. Bama. Yeah, I agree. Bama backdoors. They, I mean, backwoodsmen. Uh, they absolutely need to mark stuff that's shipping outside the U.S. I want to know. I really want to know. Because yeah, it's cause really driving me crazy. Yeah, I'm tired of thinking I'm ordering something from here in the U.S. and it takes three weeks to get here, and I get a customs label on it says from China, and it's not marked what I actually ordered. And the know. other one is like I bought like um, uh, a buttstock pad for an old, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. motor and the gaunt, you know, and it's got the steel pad, <laughs> and it will happily bruise the heck out of your shoulders. And so I saw these replacement ones to get a rubberized uh, butt pad for it, molded and for the the particular the, the for it right so i could put it on and just and get it put on there and sorry i'm a little tired you guys today but i order it and it takes forever to get here this is a couple years ago and i get it and so it's rubber i open the package up and it's hard and it smells like some noxious chemical like ridiculously bad and so i put it outside thinking oh it just needs to outgas nope 
Nope. It was, I ended up throwing it away. It was just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. And I was like, frustrated me, really frustrated me. And so I've seen other companies, um, other catalogs ads, have ads for one that fits it. And I'm still literally to order it because I'm worried I'm going to end up with the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it definitely pays to spend a little money. <laughs> <laughs> well uh you know i'm worried you're giving them ideas now bama <laughs> oh. oh my gosh scratching <laughs> uh, you guys remember when those were the rage in all the magazines <laughs> yeah. imagine people going tra time traveling to the past Wonder what are these people scratching in their magazines and sniffing so hard? Is this drugs everywhere? <laughs> yeah, in a way, it was. <laughs> oh man! Like handing a millennial a old rotary telephone. <laughs> How do you dial it? It doesn't work. How do you send a text on this thing? Oh man, and stuff. You know the uh, one of the other ones that was is kind of crazy is like. Remember uh, how cinnamon toothpicks were, they still are. The people just like to chew on them. They're kind of like a snack. Mm -hmm. Tastes good. It's like that. Well, tons of schools have ban banned them claiming that kids are getting high off of cinnamon. Like, what? I'm being more worried about them poking the student next to him. Hey, you got the answer to that question? Yeah, that's what I'd be worried about. Oh, whoa. Yep. That's how they're getting around Amazon and eBay. They're saying they're stationed in California. Well, that's where it's imported too. Mm -hmm. And it never actually hits a warehouse in the U.S. It goes from container to customs. And a week later, it leaves customs and comes to you. And that's provided customs doesn't decide to say, I don't believe this. And they rip it open to see what's inside it. I've had two packages in the last several years that were open in customs. Lucky mm -hmm. I didn't want anything I shouldn't have, but... Yeah, the yeah, and stuff. But they gotta they gotta randomly check it. The other thing is like, um, I've often wondered if some stuff is a uh, uh, damage from all the uh, X rain and everything else they're doing. It's looking for things, you know, checking for everything like that. Yeah, it it's really it's really sad is how much we've let our country become so Dependent. just gutted. To be run on China, everything for China. It's like we, you guys saw the news reports that like vital medical supplies and medication. China's like, you may own these companies, but we're going to take over and prevent you from sending that to the U.S. It's ours now. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Well, that's what we need to turn the tables and do, like uh, Saudi Arabia did back in the seventies when they seized all the oil refineries over there. And say, oh, we're nationalizing them. We just need to nationalize all of china's assets in the u.s bam oh, okay now we can pay for all all the costs of the red dragon we can uh retool we have we, we can retool for manufacturing all the medical stuff here in the u.s now or the the other one i, I thought was kind of the crack i like it but i don't like it because i know what it would do but i like the idea of saying all debt owed to china's null and void oh yeah i agree with that 100 percent. yeah yeah, it's got some downsides to it, but I, I kind of really like the idea. Is a good. Yeah. You have to do. You have to do both in hand. You have to do the debt and nationalize all their assets here. Take all the property there, all the ownerships, everything away. Mm -hmm. But on the plus side, I think this has opened a lot of people's eyes, thinking that, um, for you know, having such such so much stuff not done here anymore is a bad thing. I think a lot of people are really realizing it finally. Yeah. I just yeah. hope the lesson sticks because too many people today are like, squirrel. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, Dave. Yes, sir. It's 930 my time. Mm. Okay. It's 1130 here. Yeah. And I get your hint, young man. You're getting old and senile and you got to go get your nappy nap. <laughs> <laughs> Gil, is your wife out of California now? Huh? 
Is your wife now out of California? She's up she's, with you now? She, she's always been in Cal She's in California. She's there. She's going to be staying there at her $90 plus thousand dollar a year job for the next four years or three years. Oh, okay. Uh, why I get everything here ready? Like I just spent this week, oh man, uh, close to five thousand dollars on putting the irrigation ditch underground, and where the mm -hmm. grandkids can't fall in it. <laughs> because last summer, she was out there with the with the with the one grandson, and he went running off, and he <laughs> right in the water. You can go find them wild, brass tart. If you go into the southwest of uh, the American Southwest, you go on to certain Indian reservations, you can go get it too. Just be careful. Mm -hmm. Yep. Make sure it's not the time of the year where they're having their annual pilgrimages where they go use it. Mm -hmm. You might run into issues. <laughs> <laughs> just a tad. Just a tad. Um, and stuff. All right. Okay, so so you're so you're waiting until her max is out for the retirement, and then she's going to join up. Yeah, well, well, as soon as we get the, everything here built, we're going to we're building another house. We're going to get that started. We have got get all the garden ready and fully functional. Mm -hmm. Get get the get the place fixed up, and it's ready to go. Oh, cool! And cool. so that's that's the main idea. That's part of our five year plan. <clears throat> which we're yeah. into year one and a half on and stuff. I'm actually, so I'm concerned with, with the way they stopped the economy and all that. I really don't, all the talk of it's going to bounce back. I'm not really buying. So I'm, no. I'm about ready to probably pull uh, the money I can access that won't cause that I can get out of the, the, the accounts and the investment groups I have, I can get out and I'm planning to probably uh, get several more acres of land. And stuff, because I just think it's going to take a dump like crazy. I expect a huge walloping we're going to get. Yeah, I mean, talk to are saying if it's going to rebound, it's not going to rebound until after the first of the year. And that's really? provided we don't get hit with a major second wave, which all the people who do virus study and track these kind of things are saying we're going to get a second wave, regardless, regardless of what the news is telling you. Well, the other one um, is like, um, I mean, what's the total between the Fed and the government so far? Like seven trillion, like between the Fed mm -hmm. and all them together, mm -hmm. right? So they dumped in like seven trillion of paper money. That's going to affect inflation horrifically. Well, not to mention the fact that oil, which is what the money is backed by, tanked because yeah. there's no place to store it. It's not that it's worthless. It's just no place to store it. See, that's the part I'm really concerned about because we've been able to export our debt so well by putting the dollar so much to oil, to linking them together, the petrodollar. And I think it's going to come back to bite us very, very soon. I'm fully expecting it. Unfortunately, it's what a lot of people in the know are saying. And I, yeah. keep, I don't want to hear it. You keep telling me, Dave, shut up and listen. And then when I try telling other people, they look at me like, why do you know? You don't know nothing. You're just a person. Oh, you're right. I'm a stupid YouTuber. I just listen to people with more brains than I have that have been doing this crap for more years than I've been alive. Most of them. Yeah. So I've been, I've been just, yeah, I've been watching the economy sides go and I'm like, yeah, we got something nasty coming our way. I don't, we can't cause more damage that quickly than the entire great depression did and not have horrific consequences. Exactly. That's my opinion. I could be completely wrong, everyone, but that's what I think. Well, even if they start giving out two thousand dollars a month till December, yep, they're just throwing pieces of paper in the wind, basically, because it's worth nothing. Yeah, and we're, if, you if they do that, you know, the inflation's instantly going to tick up. We're instantly right. going to see prices blow up because it's not just inflation; you're going to have demand surges. Mm -hmm. People are like, "Hey, we got money. Let's go buy blah blah blah," and so you're going to have demand surges. And supply is not caught up, so you're going to see prices explode in places. Mm -hmm. well, it's just like TP at Walmart. What I paid for at the beginning of the month for four fifty for six rolls of toilet paper, when I went in there yesterday, it was five twenty nine for the exact same package. Hey, what's the price, yeah. price of a dozen eggs in your guys' area? Mine were mine weren't that bad. Not that bad. Um, they're was. about five. 525 here so i'm kind of like going Jeez. 
Yeah, um, I I usually don't get eggs, but uh, my daughter was saying that um, yeah, the price was going up. You know, this was several weeks ago. She was saying how much the prices had gone up. And my wife was saying the same thing in California that is getting ridiculous on the egg prices. Oh, man. So we were talking about gas prices uh, just recently. And so uh, Steve posted. Oh, you were on there on Monday with Steve, right, SOP? Mm -hmm. So in California, he said gas where he filled up was still 330 a gallon. Mm -hmm. That is a ton of taxes on that. Gee whiz. Oh, man. Yeah, and well, the funny thing is, those snowflakes out there ain't going to step up and say, why are we paying so much when they're getting absolutely nothing out of it? It's I know. Fixing the roads. I know. Um, it's not helping the homeless. It's not helping the schools. It's not, well, wait, where's it going? Oh, that's right. It's going to the politicians' back pockets. You know, it's funny how you can go in there with so little money and then come out top, top 1% multi, multi-millionaires. Mm-hmm. Just amazing how that works. You know, I'd really love to find out what their investment program is because, you know, I'm obviously doing the wrong thing. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Uh, well, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at what Bra oh, uh, Brass Stars putting out there. You know, can't get uh, small rifle primers right now. Night vision uh, prices are going up. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, what was a hundred uh, hundred and eighty dollars for a case of uh uh you know whatever is now sixty it's now uh eighty dollars more yes yeah. well then certain stores that I refuse to shop at anymore were price gouging like crazy I'm just I'm just through with certain ones I'm like I'm never ever putting a dime in your pocket again ever well tell us what what stores are those. Cheaper than dirt. Oh, yeah, they definitely ain't that no more. Yeah, I still get emails from them and I laugh. I need some comedy once in a while. Mm hmm. Man, jeez. You know, I I I got into getting some stuff from them before um one of the major events that happened a while back that caused one of the big panics of uh, of the of the ammo shortages, and now. Um, I really see why everyone was so mad at them the first time. And I was like, how did I miss the history of this company? <laughs> because at the time you were caught up in the fray. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I had no idea they price gouged so hard back in the past. But, you know, at least, you know, I'm thankful that I've been prepping for many years now. So when all this went on, I didn't have to go panic myself. I got to sit back and observe. And I learned a lot. <laughs> And I, I think that's the key for all of us here. Most of us are sitting there going, why are you guys, why, why are you guys doing that? There's, there's no reason. Oh, and yeah. We run around like chickens with their head cut off. And we're sitting there going, okay. And then the news say, the preppers are buying. No, we're not the ones buying crap. We already I have. Know. I couldn't believe all the people claiming it was the preppers. And it's like, do you not understand what a prepper is? I mean, you totally missed the entire point. I mean... I went a couple times to the store to go get some other stuff. I bought some masa, and I don't mean like a huge cart full. I mean, I bought like a little bag. I bought a little flour. I bought some other stuff. I was really interested to see what was missing and not in a select like that store. And it was funny. I ran into several other preppers on the same that I didn't even know in the town that we, I could tell we ran, we figured out who each other was real easy by what was in the carts. It was mm -hmm. so obvious what we, what each other were. And I started talking with them on like th and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't even know you guys lived here and stuff. And so it was really interesting. Yeah, that's cool, Bryce. Yeah, my pastor was talking about possibly picking up a reloading machine for nine mil. Yeah, that's on my to do list for sure. <coughs> I definitely want to get into that. I'd like yeah. to, but unfortunately, here at public housing, yeah, kind of that crap here. Yeah, I just I'd love to have well, a reloading system for nine mil. I'd keep the place happy. Yeah, my wife said no more tools and stuff in the house. She says you've got to build the, the shed workshop for all stuff. She said, so no buying that. It's got to come out. Uh, sorry, Gil, we're wearing you out. I got in a rant. <laughs> no, no, I was, just, I was just looking here at uh, um, what uh, Brass was saying there about uh, reloading 22s. I didn't know you could reload 22s. It used to be a thing. Um, and I know in the last 
panic of 22, I saw some kits come out, but I've never done it. I've never done it. I know, but I do know it's possible. Yeah. I mean, cause you know, it, cause it's, it, it's pinches on the edge there. You going to do it. And if it happens to strike where it's already struck before, it's not going to go off. Mm -hmm. so, there, there is a way to do it. There's actually a couple of YouTube videos out there on how to do it. Okay. Yes. I guess I, I'm going to have to check those out. Yeah. Um, Actually, I think I think I ran across a YouTube video where a guy reviewed one of the old kits from the 40s or 30s of Reloading 22 or something. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen it on stuff. But, yeah, there's some interesting mm -hmm. stuff out there. Yeah, I think a lot of people are wanting to go trail off into Never Never Land. So. Yeah, we're down to seven right now watching. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. well, we probably should say goodnight, everyone. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. It's time to go. Boo, 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 boo. Good night, sweetheart. Do, do, do. Yeah. yeah, we're showing our age. Sean, I'm not be quiet out there. <clears throat> oh, no, I'll show my age. Good night. <laughs> farewell. Our feeders ain't good night. Okay. Well, everybody say good night. Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming by, y'all. Be safe. God bless. Catch you next time. Have a good night.